Good afternoon, everybody. It is a lovely, sunny, slightly windy day, and we are live in South Africa on safari for a glorious afternoon, hopefully. And we've started with something a little bit different today. We're leading up to a birding day next week. And so we figured, why not start on a blue waxbill nest? It is so delicate, so beautiful, and very typically built in a thorny tree. Isn't it amazing? <laughs> My name is Tess. I'm going to be your naturalist on safari here for the afternoon. Behind the camera is Panda. Now we decided let's do a few little different things today. So of course it's a sunny day. It's slightly overcast every now and then. A little bit breezy but it's a fantastic day for birding. So why not do some birding today? But I want you to have a look at how this nest is built. It's very characteristic. So it is definitely a blue waxbill nest. And I know that because they've got a very specific shape. It looks like a bit of a ball in the tree, but a very messy one. It's made from very fine tips of grass. Got a tiny little entrance hole, so that tells us the bird must be very small to fit in there. The whole nest is probably about the size of my fist, maybe a little bit bigger. It's just the messy parts that makes it look very big. But it is a stunning little nest, and you can see there's some lining inside, a little bit of white fluff combination of feathers and the fluorescences of the flowering part of grasses. Now I would love to see a blue waxbill come out of this but it's not nesting time at the moment so I don't think we're going to see a blue waxbill here. But this was built by the male for the female and he would have had to attract her with very cute little calls. But come December time that'll be nesting time in South Africa for blue waxbills and then maybe we'll keep checking on this nest to see what happens. But it is an interactive show, folks, so please, if you like the nest, if you want to send in any questions or comments or stories throughout the drive, please do. We would love to hear from you this afternoon. Let us know if there's something you want us to look for, too. We can try our best. You can find us at wildearth.tv forward slash questions. You have to register on the website or just scan the little QR code. That makes it a bit easier. Open your camera, scan the QR code, and it'll take you straight there. Now we got a request this morning for a different kind of challenge today so I figured since we're going to be doing some birding we did a bird call challenge this morning but perhaps this afternoon we could do a mammal call challenge, an animal call challenge. So we will try that as well a little bit later on but if you'd like a bird call challenge as well we can do that. <laughs> we can definitely do that. Now something pretty amazing about the males that build these nests. In one hour a male can make up to 42, was the maximum record, 42 trips to and from the nest in an hour to build it and build it and build it for a female. So that is absolute dedication. It is pure, oh, pure effort by the male. It's just unbelievable. But I love bird nests, especially little waxbill nests. So I will keep looking out for some of the smaller things today and we'll see what else we can find for you. Let's have a look at what the weather is doing for the day since we are loving the sun. I'm sure everyone would like to know what is happening in the rest of our locations. Why, good afternoon, everybody. I am so excited and so pleased to be back. This afternoon, we are currently standing at Ntlovu Dam, very close to Eco Training Camp. I just want to give you a nice and warm, low felt winter welcome here at Eco Training Pridelands. My name is Berenice, and behind the camera this afternoon is so I'm just gonna try to see what track and sign we can find over here we are just going to carry on tracking and just see for some track and sign around in Glove Dam see what came here during the day got some beautiful Thank you. 
We know that there's nothing worse than just as your favorite leopard is about to catch his first meal in three days. You are on the edge of your seat and up pops an advert. But we want to let you know that we hear you. You can watch Wild Earth without the ads. Sign up to be an explorer and watch the channel on the Wild Earth website completely ad-free. Head over to our Explorer page to find out more. enjoy themselves having a lovely mud bath by cooling their bodies this is a lovely leadwood so if I was an elephant I would definitely use one of these combritums very strong powerful tree to scratch my body so I just want to show you here how tall this elephant bull was. I actually just stood there watching this bull whilst he was having a lovely scratch and I don't know if you can see my stick. Very long stick, my walking stick. <laughs> Very cool stick as well, lots of beautiful stories. But this is how tall this elephant bull was. This is where his shoulder blade stopped. So what they would do is have a nice mud spray, come to the tree have a lovely scratch to get rid of that itchiness of all the ticks so oh we have a beautiful little water dog coming into the water whilst we're standing here oops don't go away it's fine we won't bug you it looks like a beautiful boar i'm gonna go back to cedric and see you guys in a bit Yes, what a way to start off this afternoon. And as you can see, we are sitting with uh, two female elephants. Sorry, I'm just going to quickly release my foot from the brake there. Two female elephants with uh, their two calves. Not a really a big herd. That's just the four of them. And they came right up to the vehicle. But what a way to begin our sunset safari this afternoon here at... Uh, a Juma Private Game Reserve in the Sobi Sands, South Africa. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Cedric Dold, and behind the camera this afternoon, we've got Odeon Rusty. So what an afternoon we've got here today as we are busy watching these beautiful elephants just feeding along here. And uh, very strange, but it's nice. It's nice to see uh, a small herd, but it's nice to see elephants. That's the main thing. And especially uh, at quarantine, western side of quarantine open. And uh, these two or these four are just slowly moving south and enjoying some of the grasses. And of course, a little bit of, uh, looks like uh, you know, different kinds of vegetations that they're all busy picking up here. But yeah, it is a great afternoon. I'm hoping that we are gonna see some exciting animals, some good sightings for everybody today. And I know that, uh, I'm, well, I'm going to go to the hyena den just now, so I'm hoping that there is going to be some characters this afternoon around that side. So I'm going to hold thumbs for that. And hopefully we can get some individuals there. But it's just so nice just to watch these elephants just moving around and uh, just enjoying still quite a bit of the greenery that we have here, especially in winter time. It's usually much uh, kind of brown and, you know, the grass is way way lower than what it is now and uh, it's still nice to see them that, that they're at least having still a good amount of food uh, available to them and as well a lot of the trees have still got some nice leaves on them and uh, know, definitely I think the elephants are not taking strain this winter but it is uh, you know, well today the weather is nice so it's about I think 26 27 degrees Celsius if I'm not mistaken so it is quite a nice day as you say, as you see with the elephants as well, sometimes when they're actually feeding, and especially on hot days like that, they'll actually flap those ears. Not meaning any aggression or anything like that, it's just mainly just to keep cool. And just there's a lot of blood vessels behind those ears. So you'll see when they do flap those ears, it cools down the blood 
in the ears and when it circulates through the rest of the body it'll actually cool the body down itself so i started watching wild earth at the beginning of covid and i haven't looked back since i've seen all of the leopards i wanted to see in Marives. He's been so playful and such a character. I had to remind myself to breathe at some points. <laughs> to see those two cubs it made me very emotional. It's just been brilliant. It's just blown me away. Wild Earth and BirdLife SA have come together to bring you two days of birding madness. Where the sky's the limit and bird is the only word. Ornithologists from BirdLife will join our naturalists live on all our shows. And this will all be broadcast live in the prestigious BirdLife SA Bird Fair of 2022. <laughs> so get your Twitch on and join Wild Earth and BirdLife for our big birding day. These elephants are still mobile and moving a little bit south, We're getting towards, of course, this drainage line, but it looks like this female is definitely in the mood to eat more and more. But you know, elephants can eat about 5% 5, 5 of their body uh, weight, so a big female like this that's in front of us. She's not the largest of females, but maybe a good save. Three and a half, four tons, but big females can get up to four and a half tons. There's another female, the oldest female here in this herd, most probably the matriarch, because there's only four of them. Um, it looks like she's pregnant because the sides is quite bulged out. And uh, her calf that's been following her, following her most of the time here is maybe a plus minus about six years old, five, six years old. And I think it looks like she might be pregnant. And if she is pregnant, you know, gestation period of elephants is very long. It's around about 22 months. So I don't know if to give birth, a gift birth to a little calf of about 100 kilograms. I think I'm just going to sit here. Paul, 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 yes. Definitely when the sun is out, the elephants come out. Definitely. No, they love it. I mean, it's also nice. That's why I like a day like this, 26. I know tomorrow is 20, I think 27, 28 degrees Celsius, even warmer. So on a day like that, of course, your dams are going to be maybe a little bit busier than it was for the last few days, but you know, never know. But uh, yes, hopefully we get some elephants going down to the watering hole. So, you know, the sun is out, the elephants are out. But you can see she's quite a, you can look on the side, she looks, she definitely seems like she's, and even though she looks like she, her teeth are actually uh, expanding quite a bit, and it just seems like on the side it's bulged out, so I'm sure she's carrying a calf inside there. All right, looks like they are wandering off there. Let's see if we can wander off behind them. Okay, while we are gonna try and uh, see if we can, uh, they might go into a thick area, but yeah. Anyway, we are going to continue with our safari. Let's head over to Ralph as he's also enjoying some elephants this afternoon. Well, yes, hello and welcome to an elephantastic afternoon. I'm here, uh, my name is Ralph Kirsten and I'm on the waterhole watch for the Sunset Safari. We're coming to you live from the Okokuyu waterhole in the Itosha National Park in Namibia. And I've got two other waterhole cameras that I will be controlling. The one in Juma in the Sabi Sands where Cedric and Tessa are, as well as at the Mashatu waterhole in the Mashatu Game Reserve, which is in Botswana. Now, please, folks, this is an interactive, immersive experience, so we'd love for you to get involved. Please send us your questions and your comments using the link wildearth.tv forward slash questions or scan the QR code at the bottom of your screen. And elephantastic start. This is right down my alley. Love watching elephants and love starting the show with elephants as well.
It's just awesome being able to hear them, see them, almost feel them. It's, uh, it's just a wonderful concept, this. And like I've also said, it's almost like I can smell them. Trinity, uh, yes, these are two male elephants. Um, I'm going to try and zoom in a bit. Generally, when you see them on their own like this, it's normally males. Females usually walk in groups. So if you see one on its own, you can generally normally say that it would be a bull. But uh, there we can see that uh, very prominent body part that will confirm our suspicions. You just don't get the perspective. These are massive elephants. We're looking down from a camera that is quite high up in the, you know, on a pole. So it's the same when you're in a vehicle and you're high up and you're looking down on the animals. You don't quite get the perspective of how big those animals are. For that, you need to head out on foot and view these animals from ground level then the understanding is there. If we had some other animals next to them, we may then get a better perspective. Right, so it looks like my suspicions were correct. I think they are finished at the waterhole and off they go. And off you go to Cedric with an elephant at the perspective I was talking about. <laughs> yes, a nice good old start to uh, elephants uh, this afternoon. And uh, as I say, we're still sitting with the four uh, elephants, the two moms and the two youngsters. Uh, of course, they're still enjoying a lot of they enjoying a lot of those uh, uh, leadwood uh, trees that's on this side at the moment. They're really kind of uh, picking on those leadwoods. And uh, one of, the, of course, a good old combretum. Uh, combretums is very much a palatable leaf. Just like your bush willows as well. So those are those pods. I mean, you'll find a lot of the elephants actually enjoy those pods. But yeah, no, it's, uh, it's, it's nice to having them coming through the old Juma private game reserve again. It's, uh, you know, it's, we've had a few good sightings. I think it was about two weeks ago, three weeks ago, which was just plenty full of elephants. Every road that we took was elephants. I think it's over the last week, week and a half, it all of a sudden, it was a few, and, oh, a few and far between. Sounds like, sounds like a female that's busy pushing up a, a, a tree or something there. I'm just going to go a little bit forward. I just want to see what she's doing. Well, sometimes what they do, you'll actually, sometimes you'll get like these de de uh, dead uh, logs or dead trees that's like lying down on the ground. And of course, all the grass and that is so much lush at the bottom. And then I just remove those uh, branches from the ground to get to those lovely grass, lush grass species. Oh, yeah, I know they're going into very thick stuff. I think the other day, Odie and myself know this block very well. We followed Shadulu, that female leopard, into this block, and it was not, it was not pretty. Uh, it was uh, definitely a tough block to get through. Look for the drongas. You usually find your forktail drongas, even your hornbills that will follow them. Tiffany, Stephanie. Stephanie, so, uh, um, Stephanie, I think Stephanie. Uh, yes, I love uh, spending time with elephants as well, all the time. Definitely, spending time with elephants any day. It's like uh, a lot of people say, with like dwarf mongoose, I can spend great amount of time with uh, dwarf mongoose, and uh, it's the same with elephants. Actually, with most animals, I don't actually thinking about uh, the impalas. I can, I can spend a little bit of time with impalas. <clears throat> But yeah, there's, I think more so for like, you know, if you go to a hyena den, I mean, I would rather spend time at a hyena den than, and then I heard of him by this.
We know that there's nothing worse than just as your favorite leopard is about to catch his first meal in three days. You are on the edge of your seat and up pops an advert. But we want to let you know that we hear you. You can watch Wild Earth without the ads. Sign up to be an explorer and watch the channel on the Wild Earth website completely ad-free. Head over to our Explorer page to find out more. Yeah, she's going for, looks like a scented thorn there. I think it looks like a scented, no, sorry, it's a paper bark. So yeah, it's like with the white thorns on it. You can just see very much. Take a look. Oh, very difficult to say. Maybe it's, well, it could be also a red thorn as well. It looks difficult to see what kind of leaf structure that is there. But look how she goes through it, no problem. I mean, those white thorns, if we have to pick those white thorns up, it is so sore. And for them, it's nothing. But it's like, so I many, it's their trunks. I mean, that underneath, it's like calluses at the bottom of that trunk. There's little knobblies on it, and it's very, very thick. So, yeah, she doesn't feel anything, and she doesn't get poked by those thorns. But while we sit here, well, actually, we're going to move on maybe to Twin Dam side. Let's head over to Lauren, as uh, she wants to say good afternoon to everybody from Amakala. Good afternoon, good afternoon. No, this is not a repeat. It is not the AM safari. We are in fact starting the PM safari again with giraffes. And I am not complaining because it's sunnier, it's hotter, I'm wearing less, I mean layers, that sounded really weird, but it's just absolutely delightful here in Amakala Game Reserve. Good afternoon, my name is Lauren and I do have Davi once again on camera. And I'm laughing because he waits so long to get that thumb. It's a very important maneuver if you're a cameraman. You've got to get it right. <laughs> But giraffes are everywhere. And we are already on the Ama uh, Carnarvondale side of Amakala. We had the cheetahs this morning. We spent all afternoon with them on Escape to Nature. And I'm really hoping we can go back and spend even more time with them. We will, we absolutely will. But we wanted to admire the giraffe first. The herd of giraffe I'm going against the grain, guys. I'm going to be that girl always go against the green and I'm going to say herd. Also, there was reports of an aardvark right next to the yellow mongoose den where we stopped to look at the yellow mongoose, or we did. So I'm slowly going to bumble that way. It's sunset. Joyce, that is so lovely to hear. You're not complaining at all. It's the best way to start today. Absolutely. It's the theme of today. We started the sunrise safari with giraffe and we're starting the sunset safari with giraffe. So I don't know if we'll get the aardvark. I'm not making any promises, but you've got to try. The past few days, we've been really looking for the taraco and we didn't get it, but we heard it and that's a start. We're getting there. You've got to put the effort in. The aardvark was seen last night just as the sun was setting which means there will be enough light. So we're gonna try. They don't always use the same burrows, but females, I believe, do. So if it's a female, we're in with a chance. If it was a male, then <laughs> no such luck. But you don't know until you try. So that's our sort of plan for today. And I am excited because mom and her little Cheetos were just in the biggest cuddle puddle I've ever seen today. They sort of merged into one giant genetically modified cheetah. The Masai Mara in Kenya, a remote landscape where wilderness reigns. Its inspirational beauty captivates the hearts of many around the world. This year, from August, 
Wild Earth is leading a number of unique expeditions to follow Africa's greatest wildebeest migration here in the Masai Mara. And now, the remaining places have been discounted by 20%. Head over to our website to find out. We want to make it even easier for you to interact with our guides whilst watching Wild Earth. When you see a QR code like this pop up on your screen, then open your phone camera, point it at the code, and you will be taken directly to our question page. Simple as that. Then you can let us know what you want to see, ask questions, and much more. I've had it before where I've been walking and a water buck's jumped out of the grass. It's quite a frightening experience. Wildo, it's in your nature. But I'm not going to do the Tarakwa call because I need to work on it. Davi's pretty good at it. Do you want to give it a go? I'm still practicing. You're still practicing? <laughs> Bird calls are difficult. Those that can, it's such a skill. It's so impressive. To be able to replicate the delicate call of a little bird. <laughs> <laughs> the giraffes have moved, so I'm now hanging on the edge of the vehicle. <laughs> I think it's time to sit down and bumble on. So as we do that, we are going to send you over to Ralph, who also has a giraffe. Yes, we are live at the Mashatu waterhole now in Botswana. There was some giraffe here at the top there behind Rocky Point, but um, they, well, it looked like a female. I think she just got a bit of a fright and walked off. And then there were some baboons, but oh goodness, sorry. I am going to now just pop us on over back to Okokuyu because this is the wonderful um thing that I'm able to do because I'm watching three different waterholes and there's something about to arrive. So off we go. There is our Diceros by Cornus on his way in. So with the giraffe having left, we now get to watch a black rhino on its way to drink at the Okukuyu waterhole. So, let me try and zoom in a bit so we get a better picture. Nice to see it coming down during the day. Quite early. do is if you know and these rhino often stand dead still 
So I just want to try while, especially while it's standing there like that. Now just bear with me with my controls here. I want to try and have a look in on those ears just to see if these rhino have been notched. His ears. Is that a notch on the top of the ear? It's normally how they mark them and how they identify them. This individual looks pretty gnarly. Like um, he's been through some wars. They are very, very thick skinned animals. You can see how it's drinking there. So yeah, I would give it mm, between a three and a four. But it looks in good condition. Yeah, a bit of scratches and things there. That's most likely from other rhino. But that is an awesome shot right there. So, what more could I have asked for? I think my job's done. I'm signing out. Thanks, Mr. Black Rhino. I'm going home. No. In fact, I'm going to stick around and wait and see if some more Black Rhino come down. That will make my day even better. While I wait, let's head you on over to Tess. <laughs> so special to see a black rhino, Ralph. Wow, good job. I am at Buffalo's Hook Dam. I'm sitting on the dam wall, and I'm bringing you a lovely story of endurance, perseverance, and a little bit of cuteness, to be fair. Well, it doesn't really look like much from a distance, but we've got a big hippo here. And on top of the hippo, there's currently nothing, but there's a little terrapin that is showing absolute perseverance. Every time we can see a small part of the hippo, give it a minute or two, and that terrapin is back on the hippo's back, using the hippo to sun itself. And then the hippo goes under, the terrapin slides off, the hippo comes back up, and the terrapin climbs back up again. So we're waiting to see the little terrapin pop up on the hippo's back. It's amazing to see how endearing it's been. Endearing? Endearing, that's the word, sorry. So we've just got to wait for the hippo to pop up. As soon as a little bit more of its back is showing, the terrapin seems to pop up as well. So I will be waiting patiently for that to happen. But it is a gorgeous view at Biffles Hook Dam. There are a number of Egyptian geese here probably the same ones that Cedric saw fighting so viciously yesterday. Some on the banks, some up in the trees, but that one seems to be the lone one. I don't know if that's the one that was maybe being picked on yesterday, but it's the only one that's alone. There's a pear up in the tree, there's another pear that flew over, and this poor little one is all by itself. What I'm hoping for is a little bit of elephant luck, like Rolf and Cedric had already. Maybe there'll be a herd of elephants that comes down. They're actually very pretty birds. Oh, what I can see from a distance, in between the hippo and the bank, there's a terrapin stalking back towards the hippo, but at a distance. Yeah, it does seem like the Egyptian geese have calmed down a bit, haven't they? <laughs> not as noisy as yesterday afternoon, not as vicious. So, just above the hippo, you can see a tiny little head poking out of the water. The terrapin is making its return. Look there. Just a little nose popping out to breathe. I wonder if that's the same one. It was quite a big terrapin that tried to climb onto its back. Slowly stalking closer to the hippo, hoping to make a bank 
out of the hippo's back. Quite sweet. But this is a gorgeous spot for birding in particular. I've been looking for the pied kingfisher. I've been looking for the green-backed or striated heron. So far, only a three-banded plover and the Egyptian geese. Sarah, terrapin diet depends on the type of terrapin because you get a few, but the terrapins that we get here would mostly eat vegetation that's on the bank or the floor of the dams and riverbeds and occasionally they also go for things like tadpoles and small fish. Oh, the hippo kind of popped out there but then he went under. But yes, terrapins have a nasty bite. They have a bit of a beak-like mouth. It's very hard and it snaps shut quite quickly and so they can give a pretty vicious bite. That being said, not very much eats terrapins, talking about terrapins and diet. Not very much will be brave enough to eat a terrapin because they smell horrific. Absolutely horrific. If you have terrapin um, that smell on your hands, it can last like a week. You have to wash your hands and wash your hands and wash your hands and it stays on your hands for a long time. So not very many animals are brave enough to eat a terrapin. But also remember that, you know, they have a hard shell and they can bite, so it's probably not the easiest thing to eat regardless. drop of every safari is the most effortless natural music. Their twittering, chirping and singing fills the air with a bit of magic on every drive. Wild Earth is celebrating this precious choir with a bird is the word fireside chat. Join us and a special guest ornithologist to discuss the big birding event as well as some of the rare and spectacular birds of Wild Earth. Interestingly enough, the pair of Egyptian geese that was up in the tree have just flown over the other Egyptian goose, the lone one. They've flown over its head and gone towards that northern little section of the dam there, where it curves around a bit into a riverbed. It's dry at the moment, but that's where they seem to have gone. I'm wondering if they're not, you know, maybe that fight yesterday was a bit of a territorial one. I mean, I watched the footage and I think Cedric's reaction said it all. It was probably the most vicious Egyptian goose fight I've ever seen. Very different scene from today. Today is so calm and there's only three now that we've seen. But I'm wondering if they're not starting to look for a nesting site and become territorial. Very well could be. But I think I'm going to reposition a little bit to see if I can get closer to the hippo and hopefully terrapin action. It sounds like Cedric's got a hyena den on his side and I'm hoping that there's action there as well. Let's go have a look. Oh, hello. Yes, we are here at uh, the Juma clan den site. I can see we've got Ndebele. We've got Intima's two youngsters closest to us, and right at the back we've got uh, Masangita. It looks like uh, that is, of course, Swazi's youngster. As I passed out right at the back. So yeah, we've got this. So this is the one adult and uh, three youngsters. As you can see, Intima's two cubs. The one is just pretty much practicing some stick maneuvering there, and that's Masangita. That's still Swazi's youngster. Swazi's not here. Yeah. She's always, she's funny enough, she's one of the hyenas that's always around at the den site. But not this time. Um, but yeah, I think uh, as I'll watch Loki and Kira, uh, the two that, of course, in team is two cubs. And I think, oh, don't tell me they're going to come up here. They always come to the vehicle. 
Um, yeah. And that's, and Timas Cubs are the most curious ones. They always come to the vehicles, as we say, they are the Juma mechanics. They are the land, landy mechanics. And I think they've done more harm than good on these vehicles, I think. <laughs> I think they've pulled out more wires and putting back wires. But yeah, lie down, sleep, sleep, and come out. But you are so cute. I think I did hear that uh, Tess found her Tima, of course that's her mother, I think it was last night or the night before. I'm not too sure, I'm trying to think. Yeah, I'm not too sure, it was very well it was in the last two days. Anyway, we are going to just carry on sitting here and uh, let's head over to Tess to see what's happening with her safari. I'm happy that there's some hyena action. That's awesome. I'm still a biffle sock down. We've slightly repositioned so that we can get a little closer to the hippo. So we are hoping that he decides to pop up again. And I'm hoping that the terrapin comes back because it's so entertaining to see it on the hippo's back. And then as the hippo feels the terrapin moving, it kind of dunks it into the water. So we're just playing the patience game and that kind of also helps us wait for elephants too. And it gives me time to think about which bird call I want to do for you this afternoon. And I know which animal call I'm doing already. <laughs> but it's been a few minutes now since the hippo's been under, so he should pop up sometime soon, I'm hoping. And it looks like it is the only hippo here this afternoon. Normally there's three, sometimes four, I know when I came past yesterday or the day before, there were two younger ones and two females. So perhaps they've gone on a bit of a walkabout. Maybe they used last night's very cold temperatures to move from here back to Chitwa or to one of the dams in Biffles Hook or Torchwood. So for now, he's alone. Now, I was having a look at the peak breeding season for Egyptian geese, and that explains a lot about the fight yesterday, but I've been having a look around as well. I don't see any big flat nests anywhere because Egyptian geese like to use the top of other nests, like, for example, a buffalo weaver nest. And I don't see any close by, so I don't know if they're building a nest or if they may be nesting on the ground. It's not unheard of around that drainage line. But their peak, so 60% of the recorded breeding periods is July, July to August in South Africa in particular. So that's now. So it's understandable that they're getting a bit vicious with each other. But I don't see a nest anywhere. Normally we'd be able to pinpoint, okay, that should be where the nest is. I don't see one anywhere in the surrounding trees. Bird is the word, and it's coming to you live. In preparation for our big birding blowout on the 22nd and 23rd of July, Wild Earth is making sure you're geared up and ready to go. Show the world how much you love birding as a proud Twitcher. Find this and more in the Wild Earth shop. We are offering our explorers another extraordinary Wild Earth experience. Explorers stand a chance to win a three-night stay for two at Amakala Game Reserve, picturesquely situated next to Addo Elephant Sanctuary Park. Enjoy an authentic bush lodge experience in the luxurious Woodbury Tented Camp and feel the heartbeat of Africa on exhilarating safari drives. Sign up to be an explorer today and you might soon be off to this untouched safari destination with Wild Earth.
In fact, Owen and I were comparing the sizes of the dams yesterday, sitting at twin dams, no, treehouse dams, sorry, thinking the dam is fuller now than it was in the middle of our wet season, which makes no sense. <laughs> So it's been a little bit reversed this year in terms of when we've gotten rain and how much rain we've gotten. Even to have gotten rain yesterday is quite impressive. Even though it was just a little bit. Oh, there's a Natal Spurfowl having a drink next to that log. It's not often we get to see that at all. Yeah, there it is. Oh my goodness. Look at it, it is so beautiful. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> That's so cool. We never really get to see Spurfowls and Franklins drinking at the dam. That was lovely. Let me see if we can find it again. Very beautiful colors in this light. <clears throat> okay. Oh, the hippo's coming up. We can actually see his face a little bit now. So we are going to hope that the terrapin is on his way shortly then, considering the hippo has popped its head out. But for now, it sounds like Berenice is doing some track and sign. So let's go over and see what she's up to. Well, sorry about that, folks. You know, the gremlins do come at the most inopportune time. But we've always got our black rhino here at Okokuyo to fall back on. Is that a drink? And now just standing near to this, for me, seem a little bit of a um, midden site. There's lots of dung around that area there. It's just standing there really the rhino seemed to do this quite a lot especially in the middle of the day it's heading early afternoon but they do stand around quite a bit let's just zoom in even a little further get a nice close-up and the other side of the animal a little while ago which looked a little bit banged up but the side looking a bit better Just opening and closing the eyes, but very, very bad eyesight um, do black rhino have. There comes the springbok on his way in for a drink as well, walking in the footsteps of giants with the elephant tracks there. Wild Earth Explorers is a club aimed at people who love nature and care about the earth we live on. First and foremost, if you join our club, you can watch Wild Earth completely ad-free. In addition, we have great monthly prize draws, a weekly newsletter, and access to some great extra content such as fireside chats, AMAs, and hangouts. For a small monthly subscription, you can join other like-minded viewers and be part of the club. Wild Earth Explorers, it's in your nature. After an exhilarating day of live safaris. What better than to cozy up around a fire? Sign up to be a Wild Earth Explorer and let our guides enchant you with their stories and exciting animal encounters. And of course, stand a chance to join in the chat and get your questions answered in real time. So what are you waiting for? Join the Explorers Club today and start to enjoy our special evenings around the fire. Wild Earth Explorers, it's in your nature. Not so here in Etosha. Uh, 
Really prehistoric looking animals, aren't they? A little bit of a wobble on the camera, it's just because of the wind. There is a bit of wind coming through. And those ears are constantly at alert. So even though it seems like it's really relaxed, those ears will be moving around, picking up any noises that uh, may be happening. Maybe he's going to go for a little snooze. It's also one of the differences that you'll notice with a black rhino versus a white rhino. See how they, his head is up. White rhino, they, they, their heads are consistently down as being a grazer. Um, so you really get that, that down facing head. There's obviously not to the black rhino. And you can see nicely now also the hook lip used for eating leaves and sticks. And we often look in the tracks uh, and in the dung and you see the 45 degree cuts on all the little branches and about a one, one, inch, one inch length branches that you find them all in the dung. It's, um, quite similar coloration to elephant dung so you can often mistake black rhino dung for elephant dung because of the same color it's that um, the redness in the cambium layer and so obviously very important to look there when you look at white rhino dung it's a completely different color because of the grass right speaking of tracks signs and dung off to pridelands Beautiful, Ralph. Really, really special species the of the black and white rhino. I'm currently standing here on the road with some marvelous lioness tracks. So they have walked up the road and then they decided to change direction. So, and it's quite fresh. It's looking at the car tracks, the vehicle tracks here. And that this lioness walked on top of this vehicle track. So possibly after this morning, there was reports of lionesses, two lionesses, most probably from the Ngati Pride around um, this morning. Regardless, this is a lioness. The reason why I say it is a lioness, the male's tracks are proportionally larger and also broader than they of a female. So a lion, a male lion's track would be 15 centimeters and can be up to 15 centimeters. And a lioness, her tracks would be around about 12 centimeters. And there it is between 11 and 12. Let's say for instance, 12, yeah, 11 and a half centimeters. So the reason also why I do say it is a lion is because you can very beautifully see on this track that there is three lobes there we go i absolutely love and adore track tracking out in the bushveld um, tracks and signs and trailing is one of my greater um, specialities um, it always tells you watching Wild Earth at the beginning of COVID and I haven't looked back since. I've seen all of the leopards I wanted to see and Marie's 
He's been so playful and such a character. I had to remind myself to breathe at some points. <laughs> to see those two cubs made me very emotional. It's just been brilliant. It's just blown me away. I'm just currently walking to see where these lionesses head to. <coughs> Sorry. Good afternoon, Logan. Thank you so very much. It is so, so awesome to be back. And I really appreciate your comment over there. And we are starting off really nicely here with our beautiful lioness tracks and we're hoping to see if we can find them. It does look like it might have been two lionesses, so let's see what we can do out here this afternoon. Well, let's see what's happening there on Lauren's side. It seems like she does have a beautiful view. We have just got the most spectacular scene in front of us, really. I mean, wow. We have Zebra. I think Tess said she was looking for Zebra this morning, if I'm not mistaken. Irland. Spring Bookies. Bless Bookies. And I'm just scanning to make sure I'm not missing another species. Tessa was looking for a zebra, so I found them. <laughs> no, that's it. I think no heart to base. Oh, no, wait, there is a heart to base right at the back. Okay, there you go. So that's one, two, three, four, five different species here. All just chilling out. Isn't that absolutely incredible? And what is really beautiful about this is you get a good size comparison. I'm always getting asked about size and I think, oh, it's so difficult to convey that size. And I definitely can't remember all the individual sizes of animals, but this just gives you a really nice comparison of just how small the spring bookies are, how big the eland are and how everything in between just slots into that. I really didn't anticipate falling in love with the Irland, and I have. <laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> I think for me, the antelope, one of my favorite things about Amakala because the diverse sort of spectrum is just astounding. And to see them all collectively like this, grazing, chilling, sunbathing, playing, oh, it's really special actually. Aaron, you're saying yay! Daily dose of muscular cows. <laughs> and Makala will definitely give you that, Aaron, your daily dose of the muscular coos. In Scotland, we say coo. <laughs> but yes. I really didn't pay the Elan much attention in Namara. I was overwhelmed in Namara when I spent time there in 2019. It was, it was phenomenal. So I didn't really acknowledge the Ilan the way I now wish I had. 
incredible animals to spend time with. You really feel their presence. So delicate on their feet, which just blows me away because <laughs> look at them. When you see them run, it's almost like a large man squeezing into a little ballerina suit and trying to ballerina off. It's a bit bizarre. Wild Earth and BirdLife SA have come together to bring you two days of birding madness. Where the sky's the limit and bird is the only word. Ornithologists from BirdLife will join our naturalists live on all our shows. And this will all be broadcast live in the prestigious BirdLife SA Bird Fair of 2022. So get your Twitch on and join Wild Earth and BirdLife for our big birding day. scenes like this that I will miss when we leave here. We are the roaming team, which means we will leave, we will roam. We will go on leave and then come back and start again in a new location. And that's the whole point, to nourish the Juma feeds and to expand our horizons and education, seeing different vegetation and species and landscapes, ecosystems. But this sort of view I'll definitely miss from Amakala, that's for sure. But don't worry, we're not going anywhere just yet. We've got a few weeks left. <laughs> don't worry. I just love it. Davi, do you see the little zebra fall as well? You see it, Dov? The little fall. I think it's the zebra at about 12 o'clock from the car. The fall's right next to it. The one more on the right side. Uh, one. Blends right in with mom. Do you see it? Dark main lover, elusive. Ooh. Where to start? <laughs> A lot. Ardwolf. Part of the hyena day family is my bucket list species. I honestly think if I was able to spend time with an ardwolf with all of you guys live, I think I would cry. Literally, I would cry. Brown hyena, quite elusive here. Generally elusive in nature anyway. I have seen one before, but not with you guys. Aardvark, nocturnal, quite difficult to see. But I am hoping to get it on camera one day because it's winter. They tend to shift their daily patterns a little bit. Blue diker. Davi and I have just been chatting about that animal, this is South Africa's smallest antelope. I think we were looking at the size and it's 30 centimeter shoulder height. Oh, that's 12 inches, tiny. Caracal, desperate to get a caracal. We almost got one for you the other day, but we didn't. Nice not to Rocco. I'm trying very hard, <laughs> very hard. I think I might cry at that one too. Narina Trogon, the bird that's quite high up on most birders' list. Apparently very rare, but you do get them here. Hmm. I think that may be them all for now. I don't believe you get the pangolin here. The guides say you don't, and they say they've never seen one. I've got a huge bucket list to work through. <laughs> Running out of time. But it's so frustrating when you can hear a bird call. I mean, I'm not a good birder, but I do enjoy it. And you just can't see it. 
Would you like to have your finger on the pulse of Wild Earth? Are you curious about what happens behind the scenes? And would you like a catch up on the best moments from the week delivered straight to your inbox? How cool is this? And oops, don't lose it, don't lose it. Then it's time to join the Explorers Club and receive the weekly newsletter. Head over to our website to find out more. School is out and in the midst of all the excitement, Wild Earth has created some fun new t-shirts so that our wild kids and future conservationists can get out, run, jump, play and explore nature freely in something that's made for a little outdoors rough and tumble. Find this and so much more on our shop. Wild Earth Kids, it's in your nature. We've started to put the Cape Long Claw on, not necessarily a rare bird, but one that I've never put on before. And I often see it on this side, the Carnarvondale side of Amakala. I've got lots to do, people, lots to do, and very little time to do it. Such is life. We may just sit and enjoy this a little bit longer before racing for the cheetahs. And I don't know which what a whole row was at right now, but let's go and see. Well, just watching this black rhino walk off into the distance in the same direction as those two bull elephants but I think they are already way up into the tree line there in the background so I think this rhino has now had its drink for the day maybe it will be back here later this evening who knows now please don't forget folks send us through your questions and your comments using the link wildearth.tv forward slash questions or just scan the QR code on the bottom right hand side of your screen. It's an interactive, immersive experience. We'd we'll love for you to be on board with us. I'm just going to zoom back out and get a full overview on the waterhole again. And I was just watching some zebra and things on the other side of the water and that's when that black rhino arrived so what is going to be next let's zoom i have just gone across you can see now what i was speaking about there is the wall the protective wall with the fence that stops the animals from getting into the camp I actually had one of my closest encounters with the Tosha elephants. Yeah, so just bear with me, folks. When I, uh, with my remote, the delay that I have is about four or five seconds. So sometimes it goes too far and it takes a long time for me to get it back. So. Ella, good question. Wow, and you're 10 years old. Um, what does the word rhino mean? Rhinoceros. I'm going to have to do some homework there, Ella. Um, but um, I do know that the Latin name, Bicornus, the species name, means the two horns that they have. So when folks say, look at the unicorn, well, that is slightly incorrect because a unicorn only has one horn. But rhino are bicorns, not unicorns. So that's what the Latin name or the scientific name for rhinoceros is, bicornus. And the black rhino in particular. So we saw a little bit earlier, we saw those two horns on the beautiful black rhino. And I'll get back to you in a little while on the meaning of rhinoceros. 
I'm pretty sure I do know that answer, but it's um, evading me now. We protect and reconnect nature across southern Africa. We bring countries together to care for wild spaces that stretch beyond borders. We protect and restore biodiversity. We prioritize the people living in these landscapes, enabling them to thrive in harmony with nature. We are restoring tomorrow. In the backdrop of every safari is the most effortless natural music. Their twittering, chirping and singing fills the air with a bit of magic on every drive. Wild Earth is celebrating this precious choir with a bird is the word fireside chat. Join us and a special guest ornithologist to discuss the big birding event as well as some of the rare and spectacular birds of Wild Earth. Three in a row. Watching and waiting. I think they want to come down for a drink, but for the time being, they're biding their time. Well, let's wait and see. I'm hoping that we're going to have some elephants coming down, um, breeding herds, and hopefully they'll put on a show for us. But, well, while I wait for those ellies, let's head you on down to Tess. got something a little bit different because we've been chatting a lot about all of the different animals that we get and some of the bigger ones in particular we've been looking for elephants we've been looking for buffaloes we're always hoping to see rhinos and this is one of my favorite scratching posts and this is on Yala Road South and I'm sure you can hear my hand rubbing against it so this is a very rough section and I'll show you what it does if you can zoom in on the dirt on my hand there, Panda. But it's a very white looking dirt. So this is old mud that has been rubbed off by different animals. Everything from warthogs to rhinos to even young elephants will rub on these posts. It's quite rough on the bottom where the mud hasn't really been smoothed out. And there's still whole chunks of mud as well. There you can see a big chunk of mud. And these are all kind of building up in the crevices, but the top is so rounded and smooth. And the kind of to here is smooth. And the bottom you can see still has all the texture of the wood. But the top here where it's got the most contact from animals rubbing is incredibly smooth and shiny. So it's literally smoothed out all of the little splinters. It's rounded on the top. So this is an incredibly well used stump. We can't see any tracks here of anything that's used it today, but I can see where the mud is still a little bit more wet and thick at the bottom. Harold, yes, rubbing against a post like this because of the corners that it has and the rough edges is a combination of things and one of them is definitely getting rid of the tick load. So by coating the body in mud, and then rubbing yourself over it, when it pulls the dried mud off, it pulls off parasites like ticks, flies, anything that might be on the skin of an elephant or a rhino or a buffalo or a warthog. It also just likes, you know, it, it scratches itches. They like the feeling of rubbing, especially here at the top where it's a little bit more pronounced. If you rub the belly over that, you can imagine it would scratch a lot of itches and get to all of those very hard to reach places like inside the groin, under the arms and any of the folds of skin. So it would definitely help with the tick and parasite load, scratch some itches and help to peel old mud off. Now, of course, elephants are a bit bigger. So when they're having to do it, they usually stand against a tree and they rub against the tree like that. 
and it rubs off against the side of the tree, which is quite tall. So if I find a tree that's coated in mud, and I actually think there is one further down, I remember seeing one towards the Mulawati, I will show you because it's amazing. It's probably taller than me where you can see the mud. And that just shows how tall an elephant is. I'll never forget there was an overhanging apple leaf tree at Ngala on Nyala Loop. All the Nyalas, all my favorite roads are Nyalas. And it used to hang right over and I used to be able to stand on the bonnet of my cruiser on the front and lift up like this and then I could touch the tree. So that's tall. And I was touching mud from where an elephant had scratched its back. And it became a very well-known scratching tree. They used to scratch the mud off their backs by rubbing their backs across this massive tree. And here I was standing on top of my cruiser, stretching up and I could rub the bottom. Unreal. It just shows you the size. But yes, this is what we've been looking for. All of the, the, the bigger things, all of the little mud wallows and things like that, that would attract these animals. You'll find them in close vicinity of each other. And there's a lot of little mud wallows along here that look like they may have been used recently. This tree may be a half scratching post because it's so smooth. The bark has been completely stripped off. It doesn't have any mud on it, but it would be a good scratching tree. So let's see if we can find a proper mud scratching one. All the tracks and signs. So if you find fresh mud on a scratching post or a tree, then you know it's still wet. You know the animal is probably somewhere close by. And based on the height of where the mud is, you can tell more or less what animal it was. Because a warthog will be at the level of that scratching post that we were at. An elephant would be taller than me. Or I suppose from my torso upwards. Let's see if we can find another one. I want a tall tree with mud on it. Some old elephant dung along here, nothing fresh. But I do know there is a tree here with mud on it somewhere. I remember seeing it. It was fairly fresh mud. I noticed it this morning. Let's see if we can find it. My hands feel so smooth now. It smooths out the skin. All of the mud rubbing off is like an exfoliant. My hands are very smooth now from rubbing on the rubbing post. Bird is the word, and it's coming to you live. In preparation for our big birding blowout on the 22nd and 23rd of July, Wild Earth is making sure you're geared up and ready to go. Show the world how much you love birding as a proud Twitter. Find this and more in the Wild Earth Shop. We are offering our explorers another extraordinary Wild Earth experience. Explorers stand a chance to win a three-night stay for two at Amakala Game Reserve. Picturesquely situated next to Addo Elephant Sanctuary Park, enjoy an authentic bush lodge experience in the luxurious Woodbury Tented Camp and feel the heartbeat of Africa on exhilarating safari drives. Sign up to be an explorer today and you might soon be off to this untouched safari destination with Wild Earth. So if we're looking at this tree, I think we could find a variety of different animals that have used this. And sometimes you even get lucky and find some hairs that have come off of specific animals with the mud when it pulls off. But I'll show you again in case you didn't get that. So I'm standing on the ground. I'm having to do tippy toes. That is elephant mud. That piece there and it comes down like this. That's all from an elephant and it's so high up that it's way past my reach with, the, with my hand on my tippy toes. It's on both sides of the tree. So this is where an elephant has been rubbing. And it goes lower than an elephant because it's on this stump as well. So this could be something like a rhino or an elephant. All the way down to there. So that could be a leg. It could be something like a warthog or a buffalo. And all of that is still quite fresh. 
So it's all coming loose. And here you can see the print of an actual elephant skin. So the little cracks that you have found in an elephant skin, that's the print there where the mud is stuck and pulled off and left a bit of a suction mark from the skin. Isn't it amazing? I love it. I love it. Okay, it sounds like Lauren has found something she's been looking forward to finding. I'm so glad she's found it because I'm sure she loves it about as much as I love the tree and the mud. Let's go look. To be honest, everyone, it wasn't very difficult. I'm not going to pretend in any way that it was. Our cuddle puddle of genetically modified data have remained in the exact same position. And it's now kissy time. And just to give you some context, they have been spotted, their spots have been spotted by the Himsbok. That's not a sight you normally see, especially in the low felt, don't really see cheetah and definitely don't see Himsbok. And they have seen the cheetah. Now, I don't know what mama cheetah here hunts. I've seen her with the springbok, but I don't know her sort of history, but don't, don't underestimate her. She's got two little helpers here as well. Oh, one's coming forward, look at that. How many species of antelope is that? Now another one. Okay, it wasn't in the same frame as all the others, but that's six. I really want to have an antelope competition with two more. <laughs> Just so we can win. Mama Cheetahs, she knows they're watching her. I don't know if the little ones are so aware. They seem quite oblivious to their surroundings at this age. They're very just much sort of into mom. Mom is everything and that's it. Beverly, the adults are collared. And some of the lions are collared here as well at Amakala. And it's definitely not to find animals, do not worry. They don't use it for that sort of purpose. But they do use it for, well, getting information in terms of if you have a game reserve and you want to properly manage it, you also have to understand how your reserve is being managed and is it being managed correctly. So they, they have an ecology team here. It's quite it's very different from the Sabi Sands and you can reach ecology on the radio and you have to speak to ecology about what they're, you're doing. And they are the ones that make the decision about when to close roads, when not to close roads, when you can do this, when you can't do this. Not the guides. All the decisions come from ecology. It's a team of people. And they regularly check on the predators here to make sure that they're healthy and they're fine. They also sort of record all kills that happen. So they're doing a bit of an assessment for scientific purposes as well. And they want to sort of see what impact these predators have on the prey population, which is something that really fascinates me as well. What is the level of impact that four cheetah have? So yes, some of the predators are collared and some of the elephants are collared and that's for a slightly different reason. That's to sort of understand spatial utilization of the reserve. Elephants are a tricky one. There is a carrying capacity per environment and because these areas are fenced, you've got to make sure that you don't go over the carrying capacity. And I was talking about the aesthetic carrying capacity the other day as well. And Amakala want to understand the sort of spatial utilization of the elephants, which is also utterly fascinating. So Mama is collared and so is Papa, whose name is actually Ivory. By the way, the male cheetah does have a name and it's Ivory. Mama does not, but I would like to get her one. <laughs> Look at the cremes bookies, they're still staring the cheetah down. Oh, 
fascinating. Wild Earth have really inspired me to return to South Africa after having followed so many beautiful characters. This Ticket to Dream has given me a great opportunity to meet the Wild Earth team, which I thank. They're all amazing. I love all of the characters, but I do have a particular passion for leopards. It's, it's a dream, and as I said before, I just keep on pinching myself, am I really here? Hi, I am David. I come to you live from the Mana Triangle, all the way from Kenya. This is not a postcard. This is real. Sunrise in the beautiful Maasai Mara. Now, what I've noticed at Amakala is really fascinating. I've noticed a pied crow's behavior. It's just like vultures in the Sabi Sands. I'm convinced, not scientifically proven, that the vultures, because they have such keen eyesight, they follow the lions. Not step by step, but I think a lot of vultures, especially in areas like the Kruger, they always know where the lions are because lions are the one that are going to give them opportunity at the end of the day with a carcass. The vultures don't just happen across the lions and happen across a carcass. No, they follow them. And I'm convinced the pied crows do the exact same. They come, they check, oh, cheetahs have not killed anything. I'll go fly away and check later. I'm convinced of it. Anyway, we're going to sit here with our favorite spotted cats in the whole of Amakala, and we are going to send you over to Bernice, who's still doing a little bit more of her track and sign. And Lauren, I'm so happy that you managed to find some cheetah over there. I cannot believe how extremely busy this road is. We do currently have a singular lioness track. There is some hyena activity on here, as well as a leopard, female leopard. So we did track a bit on foot and then we decided we're gonna hop onto the vehicle. We drove up until this point and then we heard some uh, squirrel alarm calling. Oh, can't always trust those guys, but sometimes you just have to stop, take some time and listen. Maybe you get some movement or you get to see something and so forth. But we are definitely gonna just continue on tracking. Gonna hop onto my favorite office, my favorite seat over here. We're going to put the car on autopilot and then roll. Fantastic. So we are currently on a singular lioness track over here. And I just want to see where this lady is going. Awesome, Cedric, you are happy to be back out on drive. Gonna head to you over there. Yes, I'm very happy just to be back out again. Sorry, I just had a little bit of a mic issue there. But yeah, once again, we are at quarantine with this beautiful uh, female impala that's pretty much standing right on top of this termite mount. So who says it's just lions, leopards, and cheetah that uses termite mounds as a vantage point? Clearly, this impala has done the same and standing right on top and enjoying a nice clear view of her quarantine open. Now, uh, of course, uh, we were actually having a little bit of a joke, a joke just now with Odie and myself, thinking, well, it's an impala on top of a shadulu. A shadulu is, of course, uh, a Shanghai name for termite mounds. So we actually said it should have been a shadulu on top of uh, the impala. 
but uh, yeah, she deletes, of course, that female leopardess. But yeah, nice, nice to see them on top here. It's always a beautiful lighting that's coming through, and it's always a nice setting. I really enjoy animals. It's really getting on top of these mounds. It's almost like a, a kind of a beautiful statue. Not eating at all, and many times you'll find they'll have to eat around those two mounds. Yeah, Lola, <laughs> queen of the jungle. Well, I think she's feeling like she's a queen of the jungle at this point of time. The way she's uh, standing on this termite mound, she's definitely uh, looking over every one. It's almost like the Lion King, where the, uh, of course, uh, holding, holding up all Simba. Uh, so I think those in part of that uh, she needs the same same audience. So yeah, <laughs> but yeah, she is definitely. Just listening out, I've got some squirrels alarm calling, but I don't think that's anything too serious. So my plan of action for the afternoon is those lines that pretty much were on Gauri Main, close to Shibamu Junction. They just went south into Little Gauri area, so they're not too far south of Gauri Main. So I think this afternoon I am going to just move around to Treehouse Dam, take a look what's happening around there, maybe head back to the Hyena Den. I was there, unfortunately my mic decided to pack up at that time but I'm going to head back to that side to see if we can get some of those hyenas and the youngsters and 10 to 1 most probably from there I'll be moving around towards a Shibamu oh she's only very alert for something look at her yeah. to Shibamu Gary Main what are you seeing what are you seeing I say yeah the squirrels alarm calling Here on Wild Earth, we love it when you interact with our guides while they are live. In order to do this, you must head over to wildearth.tv forward slash questions and submit your questions, comments and suggestions. Simple as that. And to make it even simpler, from time to time you will see a QR code on your screen. Open your camera phone and scan this code and it will take you straight to where you need to be. We look forward to answering your questions on this channel. The Masai Mara in Kenya, a remote landscape where wilderness reigns. Its inspirational beauty captivates the hearts of many around the world. This year from August, Wild Earth is leading a number of unique expeditions to follow Africa's greatest wildebeest migration here in the Masai Mara. And now, the remaining places have been discounted by 20%. Head over to our website to find out. Thing. A few more others. So she's not alone, as you know. That uh, Impala's on solitary. Uh, I think there's a few just uh, just behind uh, this termite mound. I think there's like another two or three this side. But usually, yeah, uh, at a quarry tin open, there's usually that huge herds. I think I see maybe the big herds down there. I don't get my binoculars. I think you'll look down there. And uh, that's a termite mound. <laughs> no, it's not having Impala. Seeing, oh, what are you seeing? I wish I had uh, the you know the hearing of uh, Impala. Uh, sorry, uh, FC, I didn't copy that uh, comment. Continue with our uh, quest. Let's head to Pridelands with Bernice as she's found her bird. Oh, wow, yeah, Cedric. Uh, Shidilu is the queen of the bush felt, eh? Uh, well, here we have a southern red billed hornbill busy cleaning its bill as it just swallowed a few seconds ago a something that looked like a a worm 
It was quite quick though, but it's still there on this false marula branch. So had a nice late afternoon snack it looks like. Beautiful. Now these birds, southern red-billed hornbills, they have a vast variety of diet. They are fruitivores. They do feed on all sorts of fruits. I just actually picked up on the on the soil one of the the stones of the velvet-leaved corkwood uh, fruit. Uh, which is one of the fruits that they absolutely adore during this time of the year. Um, they feed on insects, meaning they are insectivores, and they also feed on all sorts of seeds. So their variety is quite big. A couple of reptiles as well, like we just saw, it was just feeding on a on a worm type. Just just swallowed it too quick for me to to actually have a good look see. Some insects and all sorts of bugs but they truly are such beautiful birds and it's not it's not always that we get to see them and view them and enjoy them like this exactly there we go off he goes fly away very nice so we just picked up on some really nice fresh female lion tracks again heading straight on this road again um, and it is going in a sort of northwest westernly direction we're gonna still try to see if we're gonna be lucky to follow up on her and hopefully to see her as well spend some time so I'm gonna just carry on checking if we can find some other fresh track and sign over here alrighty Tessa it seems like Tessa is on her way to Chitwa good luck over there enjoy we are gonna carry on tracking Thank you, Berenice. That's very kind. I have made my way to Chitwa and I just got wildly excited because as I was driving down in this massive lead deadwood, I noticed a pop of yellow and we found a flowering leopard orchid. This is amazing. So I'm sure you all know these, these leopard orchids do not flower often at all. It's a rarity to see them flowering. And I had to show Panda because he's never seen a flowering leopard orchid before. These plants can have flowers for as little as a week in a year. And here we sit with leopard orchids that have flowers. This is a really big plant as well. So it's quite amazing to see that this massive leopard orchid has got flowers. Now it's called a leopard orchid for somewhat obvious reasons. They're up in trees because they're known as something called an epiphyte, which means it needs to be an aerial plant. So it uses the tree for a height benefit to get to the air. It's got air roots, but also because the, the flowers are yellow and have spots on them like a leopard. We know that there's nothing worse than just as your favorite leopard is about to catch his first meal in three days. You are on the edge of your seat and up pops an advert. But we want to let you know that we hear you. You can watch Wild Earth without the ads. Sign up to be an explorer and watch the channel on the Wild Earth website completely ad free. Head over to our explorer page to find out more.
So this is a pretty amazing orchid species. I think it's probably one of the coolest ones because of how it lives, because it can get everything it needs from the air and from its own decomposing material in that compost heap. It can keep itself going in that tree for over a hundred years. A hundred years for one plant in one tree. It's amazing. Now this one is quite high up, but I have seen them higher up before. And it really just depends on what's been eating them because the monkeys like to eat them, but some birds also eat the seeds as well. And then when it comes out, it grows wherever it lands on the tree. So it's actually known as the sugarcane plant for monkeys because they really enjoy the sweetness of it. It's very, very cool. But it can also be used in traditional medicine if you want a sneaky love potion. You can ask me how. It can definitely work. But that's only when the plant is over 10 years old. And I'm sure this one is well over 10 years old. Ah, oh, this has made my day. Okay, I'm going to carry on down to the dam and see what I can find, but I will send you back to Lauren, who is having a very successful afternoon at Amakala. We're up. We're semi-awake <laughs> and alert. Well, two of them are. Mum separates herself a lot. <laughs> and these two cubs are just ridiculous. You two are ridiculous. <laughs> uh, seriously heartwarming stuff, these cheetahs. Yesterday we just heard mum calling, calling, calling. It was such a lovely sound. Hopefully we can let you hear it. And they just respond immediately. They really don't like to be far away from mum at this stage. That will change. Of course it will change. Oh, oh. Mum's getting up, so we better get up. <laughs> Or we just play. <laughs> I'd still like to try and pick out facial markings for who's a male, who's a female. Obviously when they stand up and you get a look, good look behind us, easy. Loy, you're saying your heart would be so happy if you saw a baby cheetah. Well, I mean, these are technically babies. <laughs> They're cubs. They're 10 months. Still very, very young. Okay, big in size. Just like any youngsters. But these guys are still 10 months. So unfortunately, Amakala is not going to be showing you a tiny baby anytime soon. They know that mum has left. <laughs> we want to make it even easier for you to interact with our guides whilst watching Wild Earth. When you see a QR code like this pop up on your screen, then open your phone camera, point it at the code, and you will be taken directly to our question page. Simple as that. Then you can let us know what you want to see, ask questions and much more. And I've had it before where I've been walking and the water bucks jumped out of the grass. It's quite a frightening experience. Wild Earth, it's in your nature.
it definitely wasn't like that with my brother, that's for sure. We used to fight like cat and dog, not like cuddly cats on cats. I really do think that is getting a little bit cooler. Mum will start a mission. Oh, hyena. It was just a joke. We had them this morning and they were so tightly woven into one another that they looked like one giant cheetah. It was impossible to actually separate them into three separate beings. So my very lame joke was that it looks like a genetically modified cheetah, but it's not. It's three separate cheetahs and they were just completely melted into one another. So apologies, it's really not that funny, but that's, they're not genetically modified in any way. <laughs> They just have this unique ability to just meld into one another. A little family unit, a melting pot of spots. Mm, this is exactly what happened last night. Mom gets up, one goes, I bet you that's a girl. I'm trying to see if I can see. And then the boy tries to be sort of stubborn and goes last, but he, he never stays away for too long. You can see how fluffy they are on the back. They've still got that sort of hair of a cub, a baby cheetah. They're still really fluffy and small. Natalie, for sure, I am jealous too. I have the world's tiniest legs. I am very jealous too. Everything about a cheetah, actually, look at the waistline. The slim waistline, they're petite, they're slender, they're elegant, they're graceful, Ugh, everything about them. I am jealous of. Yeah, here we go. Mm -hmm. This is exactly as predicted. We will try to follow them. It's so open here. And it's the great thing about this area that even although you can't off road, you can still see for miles. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to follow our non-genetically modified cheetahs. I promise I will never make that joke again. And as we do that, we are going to send you over to Tess, who's at Chitra Dam. so excited Lauren I just arrived at the dam we started watching the hippos and then as I looked up there were two massive elephant bulls coming down to the dam oh, so we've quickly repositioned onto the top of the dam wall and we're watching them have a drink oh that is a big boy that one that's in front I think there's another one on the southern bank. Oh my goodness, there is. He's right in front of the lodge, Panda. Can you see him in the reeds? He's literally right next to some accommodation there. <laughs> Everyone's out on drive, though. Have a look there. He's literally in front of the... in front of the camp. Oh, he's also massive. Those might be the biggest elephants I've seen in a while. Oh, that is just brilliant. And we're gonna see where they go. For, for now, we don't have enough time to get around to where they are because then they might be finished drinking. So we're gonna take the view that we have. And if they come this way, then we'll move. 
Joan, I agree. What more could you ask for at Chitwa Dam? Maybe my ribs on the dam wall later, but <laughs> for now, we are absolutely thrilled that there are some big elephants here. I'm so excited. So you can see the white tusks very clearly, even with the naked eye. Without binoculars, without anything, you can see the tusks of that first elephant. They're pretty big. So if I was to try and age those elephants, I would think that one that we can see with the tusks that are quite decent is probably close to 30, 35 years old. The one closer to the lodge is probably closer to 40 and the one behind maybe 25, so a little bit younger. So it's really refreshing to see a bachelor herd of elephants together. The last few elephant bulls that we've seen have been on their own, wandering around, slowly following big herds. It's really nice to see a bachelor herd together and especially such big ones. We often find a very big elephant bull with younger bulls, Ascaris as you would call them, learning from him. But we haven't had many bachelor herds recently with a massive elephant bull and another massive elephant bull. So we got lucky, we've got two really big ones and one big one. That black back puff back is calling very consistently. Sorry, I'm getting temporarily distracted because we're on the dam wall, so we've got the drainage line behind us and I'm listening in case there's alarm calling for my ribs or langa or shasha. Wow. So they're definitely taking their time to drink. You can see it's very slow. It's not as though they're constantly drinking by pulling water into the trunk and squirting it into the mouth. They're taking breaks in between putting the water in their mouths. So they're looking quite relaxed. They might hang around for a while. And in fact, the one in the reeds is still just eating all of the fresh greenery. So elephants, of course, like to have soft vegetation if they can, instead of hard vegetation because their teeth weigh down. And when they get older, they spend a lot of time like that elephant on the banks of the rivers eating the soft aquatic vegetation that doesn't have as hard of a cellulose wall like grass and things would. And it just helps with the wear and tear on the teeth. You can see he's not actually eating much of the reeds themselves, but that herb layer, he's eating that. <laughs> Kelly, it does kind of look like that. <laughs> oh my goodness. 
I think he's about ankles deep in water there. He's physically in the dam. I suppose because he can't be on the the dry land because there's a an elephant wire there. So he's just making the most of a an ankle swim. I'm hoping the other bulls decide to stick around and may even come closer, but I think I'm changing my mind. I think that bull that's ankle deep is potentially the biggest of the three. Oh, there's another vehicle that's joined from that side now. Wow. So that's Chitwa Lodge right in the background. Imagine waking up and you have an elephant feeding in the dam. In the backdrop of every safari is the most effortless natural music. Their twittering, chirping and singing fills the air with a bit of magic on every drive. Wild Earth is celebrating this precious choir with a bird is the word fireside chat. Join us and a special guest ornithologist to discuss the big birding event as well as some of the rare and spectacular birds of Wild Earth. Bird is the word and it's coming to you live. In preparation for our big birding blowout on the 22nd and 23rd of July, Wild Earth is making sure you're geared up and ready to go. Show the world how much you love birding as a proud Twitcher. Find this and more in the Wild Earth shop. This is a pretty perfect scene. Hippos, very intense green reeds, an elephant ankle deep in water, birds calling. All that is missing is seeing a leopard stalk up behind to the other bank and start drinking. Wow, that would be amazing. It seems like I'm not the only one with this kind of luck. I think Cedric has just been as lucky. Let's go have a look if he's got the same things that I do. <laughs> yes, I'm uh, just uh, sitting here at Twin Dams. It's so nice. I'm glad that, uh, of course, Chitwood Dam always delivers for sure. I mean, hippos, I said, guarantee. And elephants coming down there, bird life is fantastic. But yeah, we've got a bird of our own this side here, Twin Dams, a beautiful pied uh, king fisher. So of course he's sitting right on top of this uh, leadwood tree. Not the biggest of leadwoods, but it's a leadwood tree. And uh, he's just looking down and to see if he can see anything that he can go and try and catch inside of this dam. And as you know, these pied king fishes, they do hover above in the water and as soon as they see something moving like a little fish and it will dive in and snatch it up so but no it's not always successful but it is nice i saw the other day at buffelswick dam we got a pied king fisher that he caught a fish but it seemed like it was really struggling to get that fish down because uh, that fish was almost uh, the size of that king fisher so yeah it was quite funny but and they usually, if they do catch something, they'll go and sit somewhere like a, a you know, a thick a branch or like, you know, on a, a piece of wood. And then they'll hit and smack that fish as hard as possible, try and kill it, and also try and soften it up so then they can at least uh, devour it and swallow it. Oh, there's him cleaning his wings. Such a, it's only black and white, of course, hence the name Pied. As you know, Pied is black and white, like Pied Crow, Pied Bobbit. So, yeah, that's where the Pied comes from, because it's black and white. But it's got a little cute little uh, crest on him, especially that the wind, I think the wind is hitting from behind. And it's lifting up a little bit of a, a feather or two on his head. <laughs> it's giving him a bit of a, a crest there. 
I thought I'd say. I love them. They are really pretty kingfishers. And this is, this is like the, like the brown, uh, brown hooded kingfisher as well that we do get around here. And the more uncommon one, the grey hooded kingfisher. But yeah, grey hooded kingfisher, I think I haven't seen for a while. Lady, have you seen a grey hooded kingfisher recently? Not, yeah. Difficult in this area. I know, maybe down towards the Sand River, the Sabi River, more so. I think more of those bigger river systems, but yeah, uh, I may need to see the grey hooded kingfisher. And beautiful long and beaks as well. So I'm on standby. I'm going to be heading into that hyena den. I'm just hoping that there is some activity around there uh, for this afternoon. I know we were there earlier. We just had in the belly. So. Dean, no, definitely not. Um, Dean, if you're looking at uh, magpie shrike or the long-tailed shrike. So the long-tailed shrike is also very black with a little bit of white, but still black and white. And that's, cool. that's, not, a, that's not known as a pied. So, yeah, no, not all the birds that's uh, black and white will be called pied. I think there's only these selective ones around here. But there's not many birds. I'm trying to think what other... Uh, oh, southern black tit as well. That's just uh, pretty much black and white. So yeah, that just uh, hasn't got that pied name in it. Quite a few of the shrikes. Hmm? Quite a few of the shrikes. Yeah, quite a few of the shrikes as well, yeah. Yeah, they got the, uh, got the, the butcher bird, also known as the fiscal shrike. We are offering our explorers another extraordinary Wild Earth experience. Explorers stand a chance to win a three-night stay for two at Amakala Game Reserve. Picturesquely situated next to Addo Elephant Sanctuary Park, enjoy an authentic bush lodge experience in the luxurious Woodbury Tented Camp and feel the heartbeat of Africa on exhilarating safari drives. Sign up to be an explorer today and you might soon be off to this untouched safari destination with Wild Earth. AMAs are back, and this time it's with Bushmad Cedric Dold. Cedric has been guiding for 16 years and is best known for his award-winning animal invitations, dance moves and bush calls. Despite his energy for the wild, he is also historically well-researched and can get anyone's heart pumping with his colourful storytelling. Join Cedric on the 20th of July with your questions ready to ask him anything on Wild Earth. There goes a pike and fish. I thought he'd maybe go hover, hover for us. No, he's flying away. Bye bye. No, he doesn't want to stay. He doesn't want to know anything about anything. Yep. I thought he was going to maybe just do a little bit of hover. Unless he's must probably been fishing here the whole day and he's caught quite a few little tilapias and that's uh, maybe he's he's full and uh, ready to go to bed. That inflow still got that blacksmith lapping there. He's still just enjoying those water edges. I'm still eating quite a bit. Well, well, we're going to sit here and wait to go into that hyena den. I think let's head over to Tess at Chitwa while she's sitting with those hippos. We are feeling a little bit spoiled for choice here at Chitwa Dam. The hippos have been giving us quite a display. There are 12 in this little circle. We saw 12 heads pop up at the same time and they all started calling. So we've distracted ourselves temporarily from the elephant who's still feeding on the bank. So I'm sure he'll be there just now. And we're watching the hippos because it seems like there's a number of small calves in this group. And once one starts getting chatty, they all start getting chatty. Now that little one on the left looks fairly young. It's just turn his head to the side. That looks fairly young. And there's about probably three others a similar size in this group. And 
what I can tell you as well is that we are perfectly downwind of them. <laughs> and when all 12 of them came up and started chatting away, quite a few of them were about halfway out the water. And the smell that hit us about five seconds later was almost enough to make our eyes water. It's the strangest thing because you would think that hippos, because they don't really have hairy skin, they live in the water, what would make them smelly? Hippos have such an intense smell when they're out the water. I don't even know what to describe the smell as. It's a very strange smell, but I can tell you it's very strong. And um, it was entertaining. <laughs> I don't know if it's Janice or Janice. But <laughs> yes, they are incredibly playful for such large animals. And I think it's got a lot to do with their lifestyle. They are capable of saving so much energy by being in the water that they have to spend it somehow, I suppose. So they get very playful. And the water makes their bodies lighter. So why not use that to your advantage and bounce around when you can, you know? I think I'd like to be a hippo just to experience walking on the bottom at speed. But I don't think I'd do too well with a diet of only grass. But I'm hoping now that all of them are going to start popping up again. It's been a few minutes, so maybe they're about to get active. Oh, yeah, big. <laughs> This is called Fashion. It is the latest in hippo, hippo decor. A little bit of greenery as a crown. Wild Earth Explorers is a club aimed at people who love nature and care about the earth we live on. First and foremost, if you join our club, you can watch Wild Earth completely ad-free. In addition, we have great monthly prize draws, a weekly newsletter, and access to some great extra content such as fireside chats, AMAs, and hangouts. For a small monthly subscription, you can join other like-minded viewers and be part of the club. Wild Earth Explorers, it's in your nature. After an exhilarating exhilarating day of live safaris. What better than to cozy up around a fire? Sign up to be a Wild Earth Explorer and let our guides enchant you with their stories and exciting animal encounters. And of course, stand a chance to join in the chat and get your questions answered in real time. So what are you waiting for? Join the Explorers Club today and start to enjoy our special evenings around the fire. Wild Earth Explorers, it's in your nature. So this elephant is not concerned with the fact that the other two bulls have wandered off into the Mulawanini. I think he's much more concerned about getting enough nice soft greenery in. He needs a bit more fiber today, so he's concentrating on his diet more than moving. But we're going to reposition a little bit and see if we can get a slightly different angle. I'm going to send you to Lauren, who seems to have caught up with her incredibly active cheetah family. Never mind, I think you're sticking with me. <laughs> I like the jacana next to him. It's a very nice size comparison. The jacana looks about the same size as two of his toes. Now you can't see the full height of the, the elephant. Remember that he's about up to his knees now in water. And he's just methodically moving along. So he's feeding and every few meters, you know, he'll stop, have another feed and then move on after a few minutes. So he really is getting some variety and he's getting a mixture of grass, reeds, a bit of the water weeds. Amazing. 
Now, I would love to see an elephant bull of his size having a swim at Chitwa Dam because I've been very lucky before and had young elephant bulls, but somewhere between, say, 15 and 20 years old. I've had a group of young elephant bulls swimming and they were kind of play fighting and climbing all over each other. I would love to see a massive bull elephant swimming. It would be a little bit more difficult because you'd have to find a deeper spot of the dam than most of the elephants, but I would enjoy that so much. It would be very, very special to see that. But apparently I'm not the only one with elephant luck, so I'm going to have to share you with Bernice. She's found some elephants at Pridelands. Well, you see, this is exactly what the bush does. <laughs> Always a surprise around the corner. We did pick up on elephant audio and we figured it might be at Leopard Dam. So we lost those fresh female lion tracks. Um, it is a solitary female. So we decided as it is also getting closer to the sun setting, Let's hop back onto the vehicle and see if we can find those ellies that we heard. And here we are, a nice beautiful little breeding herd, just enjoying them. They already did have their water um, as we approached the water hole or leopard dam. We found their fresh tracks and there were some water driplets with these fresh tracks and we figured, aha, they already had their water. Let's carry on tracking these ellies and see if we can find them. Wow, look at that beast of a bull there, or actually. <laughs> Good afternoon, Henry. Oh, absolutely. My goodness, it's it's been an elephant afternoon indeed. Wow, don't you just adore that, that beautiful cow? Look at those tusks. It's absolutely symmetrical and very long. Wow. Ew. watching Wild Earth at the beginning of COVID and I haven't looked back since. I've seen all of the leopards I wanted to see and Marie's. He's been so playful and such a character. I have to remind myself to breathe at some points. <laughs> to see those two cubs made me very emotional. It's just been brilliant. It's just blown me away. swollen mammary glands that's how we know it is a cow but then the other thing we look at is those foreheads I always call the ladies the window shoppers <laughs> and they will have this flat square foreheads and that's one thing you can look at whilst viewing elephants it's definitely such a privilege to spend time with such a beautiful cow Well, we are definitely going to just sit and enjoy time here with this beautiful beast. And then we're going to head back to Cedric and he's finally got some space to head into the hyena den. Yes, um, they are at Jimma Clan. They've got Alden the Belle and Swazi, the two sisters. And of course, just relaxing and enjoying the last afternoon sun. Oh, good old stretch by Swazi. And got a little Masangita moving there towards Auntie and Mommy. 
So of course Swazi is Mazungita's mom. And but one of Ribbon's cubs as well around the vehicle and it looks like it might be Spirit. And like, let's go to test and see what she's got. A surprise. Okay, we've got something really, really special here. Driving along the damn wall, Panda spotted these two monitor lizards that are busy mating. And this is a first for me ever. I have never seen monitor lizards mating in the bush. I've seen other lizards, but I've never seen monitor lizards mating. And this is quite mind-blowing. So it's the male on top. He's a little bit smaller than the female who's at the bottom. And he's much more yellowy in color. She's a little bit more red in color, which is quite distinctive. And you might hear some radio chatter. Sorry, I have to keep the radio on. It's on the lowest volume it can go, but hopefully it's not too bad. But this is a very interesting process. You can see it's actually her tail that's down to the left. His tail is behind her. And she has to kind of slightly reposition and curve herself a little bit. But this is an amazing process. I have never seen anything like it. I don't, I don't know how common it is to see this. I know, I, I, was it Cedric that got lucky with mating monitor lizards the other day as well? Uh, me and Trish. Oh, you and Trish, yes, that's right. <laughs> Rachel, I'm glad that this is something new for you as well. It's not something that we get to see often and Panda has now found it for the second time first time with Trish. I don't think it's a very common process to see. We've got a little, you can see he's trying to grip her. We've got a very common little, not common, we've got a special little love corner going on here. Wow, that is amazing. Wild Earth and BirdLife SA have come together to bring you two days of birding madness. Where the sky's the limit and bird is the only word. Ornithologists from BirdLife will join our naturalists live on all our shows. And this will all be broadcast live in the prestigious BirdLife SA Bird Fair of 2022. So get your Twitch on and join Wild Earth and BirdLife for our big birding day. So this is a really strange process to see. Brenda, yes, they do lay eggs. In about five weeks' time, if this female has mated successfully, this pair, in around five weeks' time, she could lay up to about 50 eggs, five zero. They're quite small eggs, but she can lay about 50 eggs, and they'll normally lay them somewhere very safe, like inside a termite mound or buried underground. And... Um, they will then develop, the eggs will be incubated by the heat of the ground itself, not by the female. So she leaves the eggs once she's laid them, she doesn't stay with them. But up to about 50 eggs, which is really impressive. Some have been recorded to go as far as 60 eggs. But I'd say around 50 is the average. They can increase that clutch size as they get older, so they might only start with 10. 
and the more eggs or the more mating seasons they go through, the more eggs they can hatch. But of course those little ones will be very vulnerable because they're a perfect bite-sized snack for snakes, adult monitor lizards, birds of prey, even leopards. We saw, I had uh, Maribs kill a baby monitor lizard at Twin Dams. I don't know if you remember that. And he kind of ate one of its feet and then left the rest of the baby monitor lizard. <clears throat> it wasn't a particularly big one. But of course, that's why they lay so many eggs because if they're a perfect bite size, how many of them would actually reach adulthood? This is amazing. He's kind of gripped her with his claws and he stays still for really long and then every now and then he tries to reposition a little bit. It's not often you get to see any of the reptiles mating. I think, I'm trying to think of all the sightings I've had. I've seen crocodiles courting, never mating. I've seen snakes mating, maybe three times. Yeah, about three times. And I have seen striped skinks mating. That's it. That's it. I haven't ever seen monitor lizards mating. This is quite a fascinating process. Now this is also really cool to see because monitors are considered a protected species, monitor lizards, especially in South Africa. So. It's really cool to see them mating and hopefully having a new generation come along. Now I wonder where she would lay eggs in relation to where we are because Chitwa Dam is very popular with foot traffic so she'd probably have to move a distance away to mate. But this also, this also gives me a lot more clarity on what I saw yesterday or the day before. I was on the dam wall and this big female monitor lizard, I can still see her tracks behind me. She was up and down, up and down, up and down the dam wall, moving from side to side, sniffing everywhere. I've never seen a monitor lizard move so much and she wasn't bothered by us at all. And this explains that she's been here and she's been moving up and down and that leaves her scent everywhere, her pheromones. And that's what the males pick up on. And you could have different males coming from all different corners of the surrounding areas of the dam coming to find her based on that scent. So the dam wall is a really clever place to do it because of the wind. Look, we'll blow those pheromones. Would you like to have your finger on the pulse of Wild Earth? Are you curious about what happens behind the scenes? And would you like a catch-up on the best moments from the week, delivered straight to your inbox? How cool is this? And oops, don't lose it, don't lose it. Then it's time to join the Explorers Club and receive the weekly newsletter. Head over to our website to find out more. School is out and in the midst of all the excitement, Wild Earth has created some fun new t-shirts so that our wild kids and future conservationists can get out, run, jump, play, and explore nature freely in something that's made for a little outdoors rough and tumble. Find this and so much more on our shop. Wild Earth Kids, it's in your nature. So that movement that he's doing when he is using his claws and moving his body is a combination of repositioning her a little bit, increasing the grip, and repositioning himself. So it's all about orientation. When you've got scales and a long tail, it can be quite difficult to, to get the correct orientation. So I suppose it's, um, it's a way for him to to reposition and make sure he's got everything correctly. I'm not sure how long it is supposed to last. <laughs> but it is quite long. It would make sense that it takes a while though. 
It would make sense. It's not, it's not like it's very strange that this has been happening for, what, 10 minutes? And it probably was happening long before we got here. We just didn't notice because we were on the other side of the dam. The estrus itself lasts about a week, sometimes more, but on average it should last around a week. So she'll probably mate multiple times in that estrus cycle. I think it's probably around 30 minutes. Something is, something is kind of ringing in my head saying it should last around 30 minutes. That sounds about right. I don't know where it came from, somewhere in the dusty cabinets at the back of my brain is telling me it's a 30 minute window when they're actually connected like this, when they're copulating. about the average length of a rhino's copulation period as well. It can last around 30 minutes. <laughs> it's a long time. But it is starting to get really cold, so I suppose they're a combination keeping each other warm and the female's getting a bit of warmth from the damn wall, but they're going to have to start moving at some point soon because they're in the shade now and it's cooling off. So I wouldn't be surprised if they're close to the end of the copulation. If there was another monitor lizard close by, it's really interesting. We'd be able to tell from the body language of these two, they wouldn't want to move, but they would be flicking their tongues because they can pick up on the scent of the other monitor lizard. So the male in particular might be flicking his tongue to smell for other monitor lizards if he can sense that they are getting close. But other monitor lizards might come and investigate. Two males might fight over females. They do a bit of a, a fighting ritual, mating ritual, where they fight each other for the mating rights. But I've never seen this position with monitor lizards where you can see a clear size difference between male and female because it's very tough to get monitor lizards so close together that you can definitely tell, okay, that's the male, that's the female, and here's the size difference. But it makes a lot of sense that the female is bigger. Oh, there the female starting to move. Maybe she's saying, all right, that's it. Let's see what he does. His tongue is starting to flick. He's starting to move his head, so he's trying to assess what's happening. <laughs> he's kind of being dragged along with her. <laughs> that's too funny. Oh my word, that's amazing. And just like that, they're moving into the long grass and we can't see them anymore. They're moving down past the steepest part of the bank. Okay, we're gonna watch them disappear. That was absolutely mind blowing. A first time for me, I'm hoping a first time for a lot of other people. Thank you for sharing that with me. I am going to soak that in for a little bit longer and send you over to Cedric to see what he's up to. I'm just sitting here close to Twin Dams, just enjoying the last bit of the sun as uh, that sun is, is setting and it is just becoming quite a beautiful coloration that's coming through. I think tonight is going to be one of those orange sunsets that we do get here in winter time. can just see it happening. And definitely grab yourself a nice beverage of choice and uh, go sit back and enjoy this sunset here at Juma Private Gun Reserve. But it's nice that uh, Tess is all, she's got some nice uh, null monitors, very nice. Especially those mating ones, I think Odie and myself saw them not too long ago, I think uh, three, two, three days, three days ago. 
four days ago. Four days ago. I chat with them. We protect and reconnect nature across southern Africa. We bring countries together to care for wild spaces that stretch beyond borders. We protect and restore biodiversity. We prioritize the people living in these landscapes, enabling them to thrive in harmony with nature. We are restoring tomorrow. AMAs are back, and this time it's with Bushmad Cedric Dold. Cedric has been guiding for 16 years and is best known for his award winning animal imitations, dance moves, and bush calls. Despite his energy for the wild, he is also historically well researched and can get anyone's heart pumping with his colorful storytelling. Join Cedric on the 20th of July with your questions ready to ask him anything on Wild Earth. Talking about hyenas, uh, my uh, my worst story, or not worst story, but my how can I say funniest story, where, I, where of course hyenas decided one morning, of course I'll put it this way, one morning I woke up and I walked outside my room. It was at one of the lodges in the western sector of the Sabi Sands, and of course uh, stretching, grabbed my cup of coffee. And I walked outside and to go and sit, I usually have this that g the gym uh, bench. So it's like, of course, all the cushioning and all that. Sitting outside where I usually do my gym and all that. And I thought, oh, I had to grab my cup of coffee, go and sit on that gym uh, set there. And I looked again, I couldn't find the gym uh, chair at all that I was missing. So I think, thought to myself, did I take it inside my room? But I don't remember that. And uh, when I looked a little bit, you know, further around the corner of the of the where my room was situated uh, on the outskirts, uh, I just saw all this cushioning on all this uh, sponge lying all over the show. It looked like it was uh, somebody. It looked like snow lying down on the ground. And I'm like, oh no. And I walked further around the corner of my room and there was the entire gym set was there. Of course, the, the metal frame was still there, you know, for the, the, the legs, part, the leg parts. But uh, the cushions, uh, the spongy part on the gym set was missing, gone. Of course, a little bit of was still lying around there, but the rest of it was missing completely. And uh, we looked around the lodge, looked around the staff quarters, couldn't find anything. And um, I'm sure it is lying somewhere in the western sector. Maybe at our unit, then you never know. Maybe they're using it as a, as a, some uh, I can say, material for comfort in the den site. But yeah, that's uh, it's one of the things that I definitely got to, uh, that was taken by uh, from me by the hyenas. I had shoes taken. I've had slops. I had shoes. I think I've got about maybe four or five different pairs of slops and shoes all together uh, but uh, only one out of the pair and uh, of course it's funny enough they don't take both they always just take the one so yeah but that's hyenas but uh, anyway while we're waiting to go into the hyena den i'm hoping in the next couple of minutes let's head over to amakala with lauren as she's got some cheetahs to show everybody And they've all just walked past a vehicle. Mum's in the lead. And they're eyeing up the spring bookies. There's a great distance to close. And I'm not sure how mum is going to do that. But they're hungry. And they need a meal. Again, she used our vehicle. She's been sitting behind our vehicle for about seven minutes. Which means we couldn't go live with her, but she was there. Unbelievable utilization of something in their environment. The vehicle is just part of their environment at the end of the day. It's just something that's just there. They're just used to it. Humans on foot is something entirely different. But the vehicle is just here. We're just there. We're noisy, we're smelly. But we make great cover. So you see what she's doing here? She's going to go up and she's going to use the vegetation for cover. And to 
until she can just close the gap a little bit. And then, hopefully, are you on the spring bucky stubby? They're very far. That's how far they are. And to be honest, as much as I love the little Cheetos, they're not quite expert hunters yet. In fact, they're quite terrible. So really, at this stage, it all falls down to mom. The Cheetos get very distracted and just want to play with each other. See, she's going to go behind the veg. She's going to run along the vegetation line. And then spring out. Okay, the vehicles are going to just probably go in front. That's okay. So we'll join the line. I don't know if we'll get any action tonight. She's using the vegetation line. And the Cheetos are just following. They are still there. You got them, Javi. In the backdrop of every safari is the most effortless natural music. Their twittering, chirping and singing fills the air with a bit of magic on every drive. Wild Earth is celebrating this precious choir with a bird is the word fireside chat. Join us and a special guest ornithologist to discuss the big birding event as well as some of the rare and spectacular birds of Wild Earth. Bird is the word and it's coming to you live. In preparation for our big birding blowout on the 22nd and 23rd of July, Wild Earth is making sure you're geared up and ready to go. Show the world how much you love birding as a proud Twitter. Find this and more in the Wild Earth shop. Well, it's quite thick in there. Is that, oh, there she is. There, she's popping out. She's popping out. I'll get a little bit closer for you, Darby. Mmm, oh, she's not popping out. You see, she's, yeah, she's using the tree line. This is fascinating. She's going to try and align herself as much as she can with the spring bookies and then launch. Edward, me too. Not really spent much time with Cheetah. In Juma. Fleeting, fleeting sightings. In the Maasai Mara, yes, but not Juma. So this is this is actually really special. They're going to go right along the tree line until they get in line with the spring bookies, I think. Is that the spring bookies there, Davi? No, <laughs> where are they? This is a time of night where my eyesight really uh, doesn't work so well. I am not good at crepuscular hours. Really not good. <laughs> okay, we will do our very best on this side to just give the cheetah space, but also to see if we can catch any action. But I do believe Bernice has caught up with her elephants. There she is there. It is indeed the time for Cheetah to start moving and possibly make a successful kill. We are back here with our breeding herd of elephants and um, Hard over here <laughs> has decided to call this beautiful cow, or cow at least, Mrs. Fantaski. She sure does have fantastic tusks. Um, whilst we were sitting with them, they got spooked and they all just ran across the road. Um, and they keep on rumbling. They keep on making those rumbling noises. So we think there might be something in this area. We quickly turned around, went to the northern road from where we are now. And we picked up on some lion tracks and it looks like a pride of lions. Now we're back on Marula Lane again and these lion tracks are heading in an easterly direction. We do, however, have visual of a white-backed vulture sitting up top, a, which looks like a, a knot thorn over there. 
so we are definitely gonna go see and investigate and we are gonna love and leave this beautiful beautiful herd of elephants <laughs> So these lion tracks are on the road currently. It looks like a pride. Um, it could either be the Angati or it could be the breakaway. So the Angati breakaway pride. Um, we're just gonna carry on straight. Oh uh, yeah, we're just gonna carry on straight here to see what's happening and investigate whilst Cedric is uh, with his hyenas. Yes, yeah, like the Jim McLean and got all in Bilu walking away from us there and uh, just going behind. And then I've got uh, a lot of ribbons. Um, it looks like spirit, I think spirit or not. To the right, but oh, there's a little in the bed. Look at that little one. It's amazing how far they're venturing out from the den site now. And uh, I mean, uh, Swazi and Debele, they are, yeah, but they're just, uh, just around the corner. And it just shows you in Debele's little cubs are starting to become really curious on uh, the surroundings. Oh, there he goes. Go back to your den. <laughs> so cute. I think uh, I think the belly just went around the corner. I think the little cubby's trying to fill up where mommy's gone. So, but it's nice, nice to see these little young ones starting to become so adventurous. It's very good. It's nice and starting to maybe have a bit of a game or two with uh, the rest of the the cubs, the clan, uh, or the clan, or the Juma clan. And as well, well I just also witnessed these little little ones are starting to grab all the little sticks. That's lying around and biting on them and playing with them and running around with them. So yes, it is a nice, uh, a nice toy for the youngsters at this time. I think just to strengthen their jaws. That's one of the things because you know, hyenas. The spotted hyena has got one of the most powerful bite force. Ella, 10 years old. <laughs> if I can describe a hyena cub in one word. Um, adorable. I think adorable. I think that's what I can say. They are just, yeah. Definitely Ella. I think uh, people always have the misconception conception of uh, hyenas being really the, the ugly ones, the, you know, the real scavengers. Um, the hard, hardcore scavengers, predators, but not really. They are adorable. We are offering our explorers another extraordinary Wild Earth experience. Explorers stand a chance to win a three-night stay for two at Amakala Game Reserve, picturesquely situated next to Addo Elephant Sanctuary Park. Enjoy an authentic bush lodge experience in the luxurious Woodbury Tented Camp and feel the heartbeat of Africa on exhilarating safari drives. Sign up to be an explorer today and you might soon be off to this untouched safari destination with Wild Earth. Wild Earth have really inspired me to return to South Africa after having followed so many beautiful characters. This Ticket to Dream has given me a great opportunity to meet the Wild Earth team, which I thank. They're all amazing. Well, I love all of the characters, but I do have a particular passion for leopards. It's, it's a dream, and as I said before, I just keep on pinching myself, am I really here? <laughs> Looks like they're of ribbons and heart cubs, of course, in Bilu, and looks like spirit, if I'm not mistaken. Spirit moving off further down, and in Bilu, it's all just sitting here. Tess. Let's, sorry, let's head over to Tess. I think she's. Well, let's see what's happening on her safari. We 
we're having a lot of fun with the sunset tonight. It is a gorgeous view here at Chitwa Open, which is just south of the dam and the camp itself. There is a massive herd of impalas here with one poor male trying to keep everybody in check and he's not doing very well. He seems to be trying to chase all the females and they just keep splitting away from him. But we figured it is a beautiful view for the last little bit of light that is coming in. There's a bank of clouds that's come over the sun and so the impalas are starting to settle because the sun seems to be setting a little bit early tonight thanks to those clouds. But let's have a look at those colors as the sun is setting. And that's the bank of clouds, that's not a mountain. That's the bank of clouds. And it definitely seems like it's one of those pastel sunsets tonight. Very beautiful. Very, very beautiful. Now that nice orangey yellow glow really reminds me of the shining of the different cats but particularly leopards and cheetahs are spotted friends and it sounds like Lauren's cheetah is getting closer and closer to its prey. They're out in the open now. They're exposed. Mom is still leading. We are obviously losing light, so I'm not sure how much we'll be able to keep up with them. Mom's keeping her body low, walking through the thickest parts. I just don't know which spring bucky she's aiming for now. They're definitely not diurnal hunters here. I really don't think so. You can see the cheetos just following. I think mom needs assistance, you two. <laughs> Mom's staring at the crows. I don't know if you can, you guys can pick this up, but the ant, some antelopes, I'm not sure which one, are alarm calling. I'm not sure if my mic can pick that up for you guys, but they have been spotted. And not good news. But, you know, darkness is coming soon. director saying you can hear it ever so slightly it is far away absolutely i think it's a heart based because they're all staring at her hard to be as to giving the game away Hi, I am David. I come to you live from the Mana Triangle, all the way from Kenya. This is not a postcard. This is real. Sunrise in the beautiful Maasai Mara. Here on Wild Earth, we love it when you interact with our guides while they are live. In order to do this, you must head over to wildearth.tv forward slash questions and submit your questions, comments and suggestions. Simple as that. And to make it even simpler, from time to time you will see a QR code on your screen. Open your camera phone and scan this code and it will take you straight to where you need to be. 
We look forward to answering your questions on this channel. They're just here. Shamwari Game Reserve is right next door, completely border one another. Mm -hmm. Mama's up ahead, I think. So I'm just going to pull in behind this vehicle and might be the last views, might not. It's not only my eyes that struggle with lack of light, but the cameras do too. So Cheeto's mum's way up ahead. She's on the ball. She's hungry. And there's a lot of assessing going on. It's not a simple case of, ah, there's a spring buggy. It's not that simple at all. Oh, Christopher, you are so welcome. I've seen such a stunning sighting. It has actually been very, very good. I'm happy we got to spend this amount of time with them. They're special, this sort of unit, this trio. And most of the other vehicles on the reserve saw them this morning. And they sort of rotate. So it's meant that our sighting has actually been relatively quiet. Wild Earth vehicles called a ghost vehicle here. They decided that because we're live and they want us to show all of Amakala and all its glory, we've got ghost vehicle status, <laughs> which means we don't have to be part of the lock. We, we respect, we stay back as always. We have a Zoom, we can view them from far, but we don't actually have to call ourselves in. Never been a ghost vehicle before, but I have to say, I quite enjoy it. <laughs> ghost vehicle status okay we'll try and keep up with them but it may not be possible it was a stunning sighting all the same so as i figure out what i'm going to do we are going to send you over to cedric with his hyenas yes uh, unfortunately hopefully you can come right there lauren but yeah, we've got a little Mazangita coming out here now. And, uh, yeah, that's, oh, sorry, that's no, one of uh, Ntima's little ones. I'm not sure he's Kia or Loki. And I've got, uh, I'm just going to careful there. Oh, the love voice coming out. As you can see, you've got one of Ruben's youngsters here. Yeah. I'm not too sure which one it is. I think it's Spirit. But yeah, they are definitely, I mean, not, uh, so no, ribbons, yeah. this is uh, Mbilu. This is Hearts Cup. I'm just trying to look what's happening here because some of them have just gone under the vehicle. I'm trying to figure out because I want to try and turn around because we've got all the all the adults behind us. Well, we've got Ntima and we've got uh, Swazi and Ndabele at the dance site just behind us. But uh, yeah, no, so we've got the youngsters all over the shot, yeah. Nearly, yes, definitely. I watch my shoes, um, especially in teamers. Uh, Kira and Loki, those two little ones are little, little monsters when it comes to shoes. And uh, yeah, no, you got to just watch out for them and make sure that they don't take a take a bite at you because that will be not a good idea. So you always make sure to keep your toes, shoes, everything inside of the vehicle at all times. The Masai Mara in Kenya, a remote landscape where wilderness reigns. Its inspirational beauty captivates the hearts of many around the world. This year from August, Wild Earth is leading a number of unique expeditions to follow Africa's greatest wildebeest migration here in the Masai Mara. And now, the remaining places have been discounted by 20%. Head over to our website to find out.
AMAs are back, and this time it's with Bushmad Cedric Dold. Cedric has been guiding for 16 years and is best known for his award winning animal imitations, dance moves, and bush calls. Despite his energy for the wild, he is also historically well researched and can get anyone's heart pumping with his colorful storytelling. Join Cedric on the 20th of July with your questions ready to ask him anything on Wild Earth. Looks like he's moving off again. And Timus is not hanging around. What was it? What was it? And there we got uh, cover. Yep, all heading out that way as well. So a lot of activity here, but all very much no, not really much playing. It's just more kind of concentrating on the adults. And uh, as I said, the Bella and Swazi, they've gone back to the entrance of the den. All right, let's head over to Rolf to see what he's got. Well, you wouldn't believe it, but the honey badger's back. In the same spot where we saw him last time, and digging like last time too. Well, well, well. Hmm. Let's see if he gets that whatever he's after this time. I hope so. It must be something very tasty, surely. And just for any new viewers, we are at the Juma waterhole in the Sabi Sands, as well as all the mobile crew there. But we are looking from the remote camera. And this kind of sighting, very difficult to be had, either on foot or by vehicle. So we're in the best position we could possibly be. Very often the, the sightings of honey badgers are fleeting. I've had wonderful sightings in Itosha, um, but quite long distance. But uh, in the Sabi Sands, I've had literally just a few seconds. And whenever I see the honey badger, they are disappearing into the thickets. So this is a wonderful opportunity to see this individual. What is he after? You know, my thinking would be it's it's um, some kind of grubs, maybe the the dung beetle balls, and I wonder if that's the last we're going to see of it again. But we're going to keep our camera peeled for him coming back so it seems a regular occurrence so that's two in a row same spot i'm pretty sure that's the same individual so maybe if we're lucky this could become a regular here in the late afternoon at the juma waterhole well, we'll hold toes and thumbs and everything that it does continue as such. Because two in a row, that's better than one and better than nothing, I must say. Wow. Okay. Is he still there? I don't know. Doesn't hang around as much as did the last time. Maybe he's not coming right with whatever he's looking for. In that soil there. We almost... I wish I was there. I would be out there on foot looking and checking what he's after. I see um, that is definitely, well, Groundhog Day, yeah, definitely for sure, but um, not a groundhog animal. That is a rattle honey badger, one of the most amazing animals to watch. So we're just keeping the camera in that area 
just in case yesterday it just disappeared briefly and then came back so we're just keeping an eyes there We want to make it even easier for you to interact with our guides whilst watching Wild Earth. When you see a QR code like this pop up on your screen, then open your phone camera, point it at the code, and you will be taken directly to our question page. Simple as that. Then you can let us know what you want to see, ask questions, and much more. Well, I've had it before where I've been walking and a water buck's jumped out of the grass. It's quite a frightening experience. Wild Earth, it's in your nature. That's the beauty of being able to switch between the different water holes. We are able to jump to whatever it is that is tickling my fancy or that is nice to watch. I'm just going to take us in a bit closer on this bull that's side on. Because the other one drinking at the fresh water there, we're just seeing his bum. So I will continue the search between the three different water holes and I'm hoping that Honey Badger's gonna come back. Come back he will, we have to believe. Anyway, while we keep our belief, let's head you on over to Tess. have got a very successful day on this side. Chitwa has been overly productive. This might be the largest group of water buck I have ever seen on Chitwa. There are 15 together with an elephant bull in the background and a nyala and Egyptian geese are around us. And we're kind of on the slopey bit that runs down to the dam in the northern clearings on Chitwa. But what's even better is these two in front of us on the right just in front of the elephant <coughs> she's an estrus and that male is trying to mate with her so you'll see how closely he's flanking her he keeps staying right next to her tail there he's rubbing his head on her that is a really cool picture with the elephant in the background and then every chance he gets He's physically trying to mount her, he's trying to mate. And she's half being receptive because she stands still and she lifts her tail, showing him that she's, she's ready. And then every time he's about to mount her, she moves. So she's almost playing a bit of hard to get there. But it is fascinating. I've never seen water buck mating. So this process has got me absolutely mind blown today. But it's now the second female that he's done that to in the little family. He's doing it to a different female just now. So while they're a little bit further apart, have a look at these two cuddling over here, Panda. <laughs> Jennifer, I love the white ring on the bum as well. Look at that. So we have got so many little babies in this group. And it looks like it's cuddle time for all the babies and their moms. They're having a bit of bonding time. Now this is in fact a very common thing for water buck. It looks a bit weird, but for the baby to stand over mom while she's resting like that and rub heads or rub necks. Oh, hello, Impala. Is an incredibly common way for the water buck to bond with each other. And in fact, there's another pair doing it further right. Look there. 
So it looks a little strange, but this is in fact very normal for waterbuck. To stand all over their moms, to rub the underside of their belly on mom's head and neck, and then to rub their head against mom's head. Uh, it's a way of socially bonding. It's a way of getting each other's scent. And of course, ultimate protection too. I'm really enjoying all of the affection happening, especially those two on the far right. They seem to be bouncing around each other now that the male has temporarily lost interest in the female. All of the mums and their calves are bonding. You can see the insects flying through the air, <clears throat> a few grass seeds as well. White mane, <clears throat> antelopes in particular, yes, most of them would have their mammary glands between the back legs. Things like elephants have them between the front legs. Giraffes between the back legs, a very big antelope. <laughs> Zebras, although an ungulate, also between the back legs. So majority would have them between the back legs. Even the predators are mostly between the back legs, but then there are a few exceptions. Concentrating on this noise, I think there might be something in this drainage line. The water buck are very alert. There's birds alarm calling. And they're all looking down towards the drainage line in front of the lodge. So I'm just having a listen and a scan while we watch and enjoy the water buck. <laughs> that one is still playing so nicely. That is absolutely gorgeous. I've never seen water buck playing and bonding like I have this afternoon. <laughs> Nadia, I agree. I don't think I've ever seen water buck in this particular light, quite literally and figuratively. It is gorgeous. Golden light, they are literally glowing because of their fluffiness. And they are being so playful and affectionate. I've never seen water buck be affectionate before, unless they're courting each other. I was trying to think of the word, it's endurnal. The memory glands between the back legs. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, the ones that were closest to us after that commotion with the birds have started moving backwards. That was an alarm call. All right, I just want to have a listen for a minute. We can talk about the beautiful water buck just now, but we can watch them while we listen. Those 
These birds do not sound happy. How funny would it be if we're sitting here watching these water back and really loving it because it is absolutely gorgeous. And there's a leopard or something behind us. <laughs> we might have to go and look for it. In the backdrop of every safari is the most effortless natural music. Their twittering, chirping and singing fills the air with a bit of magic on every drive. Wild Earth is celebrating this precious choir with a bird is the word fireside chat. Join us and a special guest ornithologist to discuss the big birding event as well as some of the rare and spectacular birds of Wild Earth. Bird is the word and it's coming to you live. In preparation for our big birding blowout on the 22nd and 23rd of July, Wild Earth is making sure you're geared up and ready to go. Show the world how much you love birding as a proud Twitter. Find this and more in the Wild Earth shop. I think this might be my favorite sighting of the day, close to my favorite sighting of the week, just because of the color and that snowy effect. Absolutely brilliant. We're gonna sit and enjoy the water buck for a little bit longer and try and figure out what those birds are alarm calling for. This sounds like Rolf's honey badger might be making a return. Let's go have a look. Yes, well, uh, we, I know it's a bit obscure, folks, but um, an obscure honey badger sighting is still a honey badger sighting. There it is. It's just getting a bit dark as well, so a little bit grainy, but he's still in the background there. And I'm just hoping he shows himself a bit more that we can see him busy, 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 as honey badgers generally are. It really is intriguing. If I was there on Juma, I would be investigating. I would be checking. I wonder if there's even a den site nearby. I would go in the early morning and trail him because I don't want to come across him and scare him. So because he's been active in this sort of time of day, I'd wait till the morning, maybe even after morning drive, and then I'd go and follow those tracks and find where he is coming and going from. Just to get an understanding. I love those kind of missions, especially tracking missions. He's there. That looked like, was it another drongo? Dark mane lover, um, closest relative, uh, I believe, is the polecat, the striped polecat. But um, yeah, that's, that's here locally. And also very similar, that aposmatic coloration, the black and white. And that's about the closest we get to a skunk, I'll say that. But I'm really intrigued with this badger. Seems like he may. Oh, he's still moving around there. It's, sorry, folks. It is a, is a. It's an obscure view through the branches and the light disappearing now. It's um, always just worth a look into when there's badgers around. Especially now with a returning one as well. And that is one of the animals I have never ever seen, a striped polecat. Never seen one. And this is the closest I've been to that. So if you've seen one, but yourself, please send us your pictures of them. That would be wonderful. 
It's a very rare sighting. It's um, there he is, there he is, and he's busy. It's um, qu quite similar to the the little cats, the African wild cat. We are offering our explorers another extraordinary Wild Earth experience. Explorers stand a chance to win a three-night stay for two at Amakala Game Reserve, picturesquely situated next to Addo Elephant Sanctuary Park. Enjoy an authentic bush lodge experience in the luxurious Woodbury Tented Camp and feel the heartbeat of Africa on exhilarating safari drives. Sign up to be an explorer today and you might soon be off to this untouched safari destination with Wild Earth. AMAs are back, and this time it's with Bushmad Cedric Dold. Cedric has been guiding for 16 years and is best known for his award winning animal invitations, dance moves, and bush calls. Despite his energy for the wild, he is also historically well researched and can get anyone's heart pumping with his colorful storytelling. Join Cedric on the 20th of July with your questions ready to ask him anything on Wild Earth. White Mane, thanks for your comment. Yeah, well, as I say, I can't claim this. Uh, I can just claim the chatting about it. The Zoomies are busy there um, on the Juma cam and doing fantastic work all the time. So it wasn't me that found this honey badger. And we can hear the um, pill spotted owlet starting to get going now. They like that Tambuti forest just below the damn wall. I remember walking in there and seeing quite a few of them. Busy, busy badger. Okay, folks, I think this is nearly just about run its course. Unless he comes closer to us, I think um, we're going to have to head you on over to Cedric, who's on the move. Gary Main Zoes. Very nice, nice to see that honey badger again, which is fantastic. Really, such a nice animal to see, especially digging up. I wonder if it's not digging up for those little sand frogs. It's the same as your uh, monitors. Your monitors will do that as well. I'll dig up in those river beds, drainage lines, really sandy areas. So it's, that's uh, the sand frog. So I wonder if it's not really looking for that, and picking up the smell. I mean, and I think they're around about. 10, 10 centimeters deep from the surface. They dig themselves in there. It'll be nice to know what they're actually trying to dig up that side. But yes, I am doing Gary Main. I am taking my chances with uh, those lines that crossed into Little Gary Hoffman's, which is just south of us here now. And I'm just hoping that uh, we might be lucky if it is getting dark now, getting them moving and not going further south. And I'm hoping that they will come for some reason uh, north for us. But uh, so far, no luck on that. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to head towards Zoe's. I know that Tess said she also had a female lioness uh, tracks coming down Zoe's all by herself um, this morning. So I don't know how far she came down. So we'll just uh, keep our eyes peeled for that and see if maybe we do bump into that female. Yeah, no, definitely the cats have eluded us now. But yeah, while we're going to continue on to Zoe's or towards Zoe's side, let's head over to Amakala with Lauren as she wants to show you something amazing. It did get a little bit too dark to follow the cheetahs, I'm afraid, but what we can show you is quite a spectacular skyline. On one side, the sky is on fire. It literally looks like a fire. 
and ever so slowly on the other side, something is rolling in towards Amakala. Not sure what it is. Not sure what we're in store for, but it doesn't look so good. However, we are just going to sit here. We're in Aardvark territory, so we're going to keep our eyes open for Aardvarks as we just sit here with you all and admire the stunning skyline. You're saying every day it just gets better. Indeed. What about the day we show you on Artvark? <laughs> Today was spectacular and it was so great to share that with all of you. Okay, we, we didn't get the hunt, but we got to spend time with that little family of Cheetah and it was just so wonderful. And we're going to keep trying and keep trying for all these elusive animals. <laughs> One day we're going to get there. But this will be it from Amakala, unless we find an aardvark. <laughs> and somehow, we will show you. Hayley, <laughs> you're saying you're not ready to cry with me. You must always be ready to cry with me. I am quite the crier. I cry when I'm frustrated, which is really silly, but I just do. And I do, I get very emotional. I cry at adverts on TV, documentaries, films, ugh. There's a lot of films that I want to watch, but mm, I just can't. <laughs> so get ready, get ready. <laughs> it will happen. <laughs> Wild Earth Explorers is a club aimed at people who love nature and care about the earth we live on. First and foremost, if you join our club, you can watch Wild Earth completely ad-free. In addition, we have great monthly prize draws, a weekly newsletter, and access to some great extra content such as fireside chats, AMAs, and hangouts. For a small monthly subscription, you can join other like-minded viewers and be part of the club. Wild Earth Explorers, it's in your nature. After an exhilarating day of live safaris. What better than to cozy up around a fire? Sign up to be a Wild Earth Explorer and let our guides enchant you with their stories and exciting animal encounters. And of course, stand a chance to join in the chat and get your questions answered in real time. So what are you waiting for? Join the Explorers Club today and start to enjoy our special evenings around the fire. Wild Earth Explorers, it's in your nature. I'm sitting here willing the art fuck into existence. <laughs> willing it. We are going to actually sit tight just a little bit and see if we do hear or see anything as the skyline is just too gorgeous. But for now, we are going to send you over to Ralph at one of his water holes and see what he has for us. A little sparring session here next to the Okukuyu water hole. Two big bulls. My money's on the one on the left. Here we go. They've been warming up for this for a little while now. 
And you've just seen them now start. But I don't think it's very serious. I think they're just having a bit of play. Asserting a little bit of dominance. But they did come in together. So it's just boys being boys. amazing to watch and these massive guys get playing or fighting it's, um, yeah and the old African proverb obviously there's not much of it around here but the old African proverb is when two big bull elephants fight it's the grass that suffers the most Is he winding up for, or is he just stretching? Hmm. Seems the one on the right's the biggest show off, but I'm pretty sure the one on the left is the dominant one. He's not having any of it. go contact Amanda, I'm, um, I, I think they're settling a few differences here, yeah, as only elephants can. Um, but it would be very interesting to know exactly what they are talking about. Okay, so now you can see that the one on the left is just... Um, Ah, there's no competing with him, I think. The one on the right, he's been showing off a bit. But you can just see the confidence. The big boy on the left. Wild Earth at the beginning of COVID and I haven't looked back since. I've seen all of the leopards I wanted to see in Marives. He's been so playful and such a character. I had to remind myself to breathe at some points. <laughs> to see those two cubs made me very emotional. It's just been brilliant. It's just blown me away. Springbok photo bombing off to the left there.
these are one of the most awesome encounters in the bush for me. Two bulls going at it. I don't think it's anything gnarly. I think they're just um, enjoying each other's company. Well, speaking of company, let's head you off to Cedric. Yeah, no, that's nice. Uh, it's nice to see elephants and a little bit of interaction as well. There's nothing better than that. But uh, once again, we are sitting at a beautiful sunset. It is getting now much darker. Of course, the sun has set about say, 15 minutes ago, 20 minutes ago. And uh, it is now slowly but surely ending up to become a very dark night. I think uh, I'm hoping for the... This is sitting a little bit on Zoe's, hoping to hear any uh, contact calls or, you know, calling from the lions, but uh, or even the leopards. But so far, I haven't heard too much. But as I said, I am sitting on Zoe's. Just a quick thing. Um, so on Wednesday, the 20th of July, uh, 20 to 7, Central African time at night, 20 to 7, for explorers only. Um, I will be on uh, Ask Me Anything, so please join us, all the explorers, on the 20th of uh, July, 20 to 7 at night, p.m., uh, Central African time. So that is this Wednesday. I am really looking forward to it, so please uh, join me on that chat, and you guys can ask me anything and yes i'm hoping i can answer all your questions but on that note i think we should go north and see what's up on zoe's let's see if we can get any cats for the for the drive hopefully we get the last minute cat or the last minute nocturnal animal that's going to be hanging around here for us or even an owl outlet you know how it goes at night time looking for any of those eyes so because I'm on Zoe's, this is pretty much the territory for mainly uh, Shudulu, the female leopard, or tortoise pan, the male. So I'm hoping that maybe they might be on our property, but I haven't heard anything from the West uh, about them, so I never know. I don't think anyone has done Zoe's this afternoon. So yes, untouched area for the afternoon, but it's nice, I like it. I like it. But yes, I'm hoping maybe those lines will cross, if not tonight, I think tomorrow morning. It's such a, um, yeah, they've just been just hiding off uh, our boundary of Juma itself. And I think as well for the S8 male that's just uh, north of Juma. I mean, we did, I think Tess heard him last night. It sounded like, she said, told me, she sounded like he was coming closer and closer and closer all the time. But we didn't get anything crossing over uh, the cut line, uh, Biffles of Cut Line. But it just shows you, that's why lions and leopards, they really call at night time. Um, the noise really travels quite far at night. And uh, see, I've got definitely tracks of something here, yeah, but I'm not too sure. I'm not going to say what it is. Can't see too much here. Yeah, no, it doesn't look like anything too anyways. watching Wild Earth at the beginning of COVID and I haven't looked back since. I've seen all of the leopards I wanted to see and Marie's. He's been so playful and such a character. I had to remind myself to breathe at some points. <laughs> to see those two cubs made me very emotional. It's just been brilliant. It's just blown me away. Continue up to Zoe's. Let's head back to Ralph with those, you know, those elephants and see what's happening with them.
Well, they're still up to what they were up to, which is um, standing each other, well, standing off with each other, should I say. But, uh, it's getting quite exciting now. I love the dust when they push against each other, especially in this, in this sort of golden hour later in the afternoon. fascinating to watch just sheer raw power Charles yeah well I have literally spent days at this waterhole watching elephants doing stuff like this so I have to concur I could definitely carry on sitting and watching these two in particular it sort of seems to hot up a little bit and then they just go back to standing off again. It seems the one at the back is a bit younger than this one on this side and maybe just challenging him a little bit. But I think there's only going to be one winner in this. And the photographs, if you were there now, would just be sensational. Lulu, I have witnessed many elephant fights, big bulls, both in must. Um, there was one that we had in the Maasai Mara when I was actually live on Safari Live and they were chasing each other around the plains. It was incredible. Um, and there was trumpeting and real fighting going on. But Lulu, I've actually watched um, elephants, uh, a bull kill another bull as well. So it doesn't always end happily. Um, but yeah, I've seen it many times. I don't believe that this is a real fight. I think this is just a bit of um, almost friendly, friendly warfare. They're just, uh, just testing each other. Um, yeah, it's like me with some of my mates. We often do a bit of wrestling or whatever, even at my age, you know. Boys will be boys. Play a bit of touch rugby, something like that, you know? But this is elephants, so they don't really play sports. Well, there's another youngster coming on the scene. Sometimes you can see when elephants, when the, the, he's not being, you know, you will see that he could be feeling a bit embarrassed. I've seen like a big bull and with, with a slightly smaller bull like this, um, and you can see who the, uh, the obvious winner is. And then the one who was the loser sort of goes and either pushes a tree over or takes it out on a little youngster like this. So let's see what happens here. Pick on somebody your own size, buddy. You see now that other one, not so sure. Doesn't really want to join this fight. I definitely believe wholeheartedly that elephants feel embarrassed if they lose or, you know, or they are in some way um, put on the short stick. They, they do then react accordingly and almost like a bit of a sore loser. Well, I suppose that's that's what the pecking order is all about. Wild Earth and BirdLife SA have come together to bring you two days of birding madness. With the sky's the limit and bird is the only word. 
Ornithologists from BirdLife will join our naturalists live on all our shows. And this will all be broadcast live in the prestigious BirdLife SA Bird Fair of 2022. <laughs> so get your Twitch on and join Wild Earth and BirdLife for our big birding day. Helen, um, the I've seen well the one where where we watched the bull killing another bull. It was a dominant bull in a private reserve. Um, it took basically the whole day, and luckily we were on a private reserve um, because eventually the the younger bull was obviously now sort of taking over. The old bull was really old. Um, and there was this youngster that, when I say youngster, I mean, he's already in his late 20s, early 30s, but in his prime. And the older bull was sort of past his prime. And they were fighting pretty much the whole day. Um, and eventually the younger bull, they were exhausted, but the younger bull still had energy and he pressed his tusks right in through the older bull. And he was goring him, he was stabbing him and, and um, as I say, luckily on a private reserve, we got the vets in and we didn't do anything except dart the older bull and put him out. So, but the younger bull carried on murdering him, basically. Um, and to take, to take the, the position of dominant bull of, of the area. Totally natural, totally normal, it happens all the time. But we were just able to help ease the pain. And so we did. But we didn't change or stop or do anything else except um, assist the bull in passing. So yes, it can uh, be a very lengthy affair when elephants fight. But as I say, um, the real aggressive fights that I've seen, this is, this is just a bit of argy-bargy. You can hear southern white crown shrikes in the background, but yep. So, are they going to get going at it again? Maybe, maybe they're not quite finished. The arm wrestle has just begun. And while we watch that, let's head you on over to Tess. like a very interesting sighting with all of the male elephants and disciplining and possibly getting a little embarrassed. I understand that. I just got my lights off temporarily because there was a very confused little scrub here. I didn't want to blind it with my lights. It was looking a bit nervous. We have got our tyres firmly back on Juma ground. We're on Central Road. And we are looking for nocturnal animals. I am hoping for a, oof, maybe a pearl spotted owlet, because I've seen an African scops owl recently. And a genet or a white-tailed mongoose. Those are my two bucket lists tonight, bucket list items. And let's hope we get lucky. Going into the dip. A long panda, it's a bit bumpy. <laughs> uh, of course, this is the last area we saw Tlalumba's cubs. 
and Palamba, but I doubt we are going to be lucky enough to find them. Would you like to have your finger on the pulse of Wild Earth? Are you curious about what happens behind the scenes? And would you like a catch up on the best moments from the week delivered straight to your inbox? How cool is this? And oops, don't lose it, don't lose it. Then it's time to join the Explorers Club and receive the weekly newsletter. Head over to our website to find out more. School is out and in the midst of all the excitement, Wild Earth has created some fun new t-shirts so that our wild kids and future conservationists can get out, run, jump, play and explore nature freely in something that's made for a little outdoors rough and tumble. Find this and so much more on our shop. Wild Earth Kids, it's in your nature. I'm just imagining just coming around the corner and bumping into Monwati, the ghost. It would be amazing. But anyway, let me keep on dreaming and believing that dreams can come true and I will send you to Rolf to catch up with his elephants. What are they doing now? Well, the boys are being boys. They've uh, had the little pushy shovey and now it's back to drinking. Yes. But there's been a wonderful sighting with these three. There's another bull coming in the background. That looks like a big one. This is just one. Uh, I think so, yes. Coming down the yellow brick road. Quite a way to go still, but um, I'm going to be joining these three. The sun now getting low on the horizon. We protect and reconnect nature across southern Africa. We bring countries together to care for wild spaces that stretch beyond borders. We protect and restore biodiversity. We prioritize the people living in these landscapes, enabling them to thrive in harmony with nature. We are restoring tomorrow. AMAs are back, and this time it's with Bushmad Cedric Dold. Cedric has been guiding for 16 years and is best known for his award-winning animal imitations, dance moves and bush calls. Despite his energy for the wild, he is also historically well-researched and can get anyone's heart pumping with his colourful storytelling. Join Cedric on the 20th of July with your questions ready to ask him anything on Wild Earth. And anybody that listened to me generally came back with reports of having seen lions. So, if you go to Okokuyo, you can trust that the elephants will come to the waterhole around lunchtime. You can also trust that just after sunset, the black rhinos will come to drink. And you can bet your bottom dollar on the lions coming for a drink between 1 and 3 a.m.
So I'm going to sit and wait for this big bull to come in and let's see if it's going to be two on two or every man for himself. And uh, well, intriguing as that may be, I'm going to send you on over to Cedric. Just uh, bumbling around here, yeah, just taking a look. <coughs> I haven't even seen an eye. I've seen uh, Impala eyes on Sham. I almost like blinded uh, Impala there, but uh, quickly realized it was Impala. I thought it might have been something else, but it wasn't. So, yeah, I haven't seen too many eyes here, but we always keep a, keep a lookout on, uh, on anything that is going to reflect back to us. Um, I'm actually hoping to see a little bit of an owl or outlet for the last, but yeah. Um, I'm holding thumbs, crossing fingers, everything for tomorrow morning. I'm hoping that uh, we are going to have uh, a little bit more action tomorrow morning. Arthur, one of my favorite smells in the bush is definitely an elephant, a male elephant in must. It is absolutely, then you know you're in the bush, then you know you've got something that's very big there, very musty, and uh, it is... Uh, I think it's a nice smell. Does it sound a little bit funny or weird? Well, I think so. <laughs> but uh, Arthur, I think that's just one of my nicest smells. I don't know. Or even a leopard that's uh, scent marking with its anal gland smelling like, of course, uh, good old buttered popcorn. Yeah, no, um, I think maybe, I think that's about, uh, I think I'd rather should uh, not to continue with the smell spot because, yeah. <laughs> But a very strange taste for smells. Well, actually, that sounds even worse. A taste for smell. Hmm. Liking for smells. <laughs> but I, th I don't know. What would, I think I'd like to know what others... Uh, I wonder what uh, Tess and them would like. Uh, I, wonder what, I wonder what their favorite smells are. I mean, of the bush. There's so many different things. I mean, it depends on if you're talking about plants, animals. But I don't know. You know what, as well, I think it's nice is when that first rains come and when all of a sudden you get uh, the next morning that bush smells like uh, that like fresh soil, grassy, uh, bushy smell. I love that. It's also very nice. So, yes, that sounds a little bit more kind of appropriate, I think. Okay. Petrical. Uh, smell of rain, petrical. Yeah, it is nice. Uh, I think it's got a, a smell of rain, as Odie says. I think it's, it's definitely got that unique smell to it. And you know you're in the bush when you get that smell. I don't think you can get that smell in the city. Or you don't, no, there's no ways. Because you need the grass, you need that kind of soil, you need this freshness. And I think yeah, it's a good old smell. <laughs> I think Lauren will back me up on the uh, elephant in mass. I think she also, as I think she said the other day, she loves it, so. Yes, well, we're gonna continue. Let's head over to Tess to see what she loves to smell, or what's her favorite smell in the bush. It's a pretty good point. Uh, a bull elephant in must is quite a spicy smell. You definitely know you're in the bush when you can smell that. I have found a tiny little steenbuck. I don't know if we're going to be able to get it because it might be quite far. But we're going to try because it's very cute and very tiny. It's there somewhere. Oh, I see an eye. That's impressive. <laughs> so it seems to be a little bit too far for the infrared reach, but let's see. It looks like it might be coming closer. Now, said to answer your question while we wait patiently for the steenbuck, my favorite smells in the bush. Potato bush, thatched roofing from the rest camps in Kruger Park. That smell has stuck all those family holidays. Potato bush and thatch roofing. But actual animal smells, definitely wild dogs. Popcorn, leopard urine, 
And flowers would be a woolly caper. Far and above the others, a woolly caper. Isn't it amazing how we associate different senses with different emotions? Those smells, all of them, have an incredibly emotional response to me. I associate them with those family holidays growing up and just... I don't know. I'll never get over those smells. I've just enjoyed them too much for too many years. And every time I smell them, it takes me back. I get a bit nostalgic. It reminds me why I love the bush and why I wanted to be here. But what an incredible day it has been. I don't think we could have expected such magical views today. I know we didn't find Falamba or any of those, but we had the cheetah and the cheetos. We had some amazing elephant interaction with Ralph. Very cool to see that, especially with a remote camera. A nice little glimpse into elephant behavior without human interaction and interruption. We also had some really different ones. The waterbuck, the hyenas, the little insects and grass seeds floating around. But it was an absolute pleasure having you on the back of the vehicle with me and Cedric and everyone else. We will be out and about early tomorrow morning, 6.30 Central African time in the morning. Hopefully we have a very successful day tomorrow. We'll make it a, an interesting Tuesday for sure. But uh, from the Steenbuck and myself and Panda and everyone else in the crew, have a lovely evening and we'll see you tomorrow. animal kills and carcasses. Viewer discretion is advised.